after two early season losses, respectability, not the Orange Bowl, was on the mind of CU head coach Bill McCartney. But the young buffs have turned things around with two lopsided Big 8 victories. Now three feet is back in the CU vocabulary. Three feet, baby. Three feet. Three feet, baby. What we have to do now is recognize that we're not good enough yet. And, uh, but this puts us in position. It does no more than that. It just postures us where we are. We have as good a chance as anybody at the title. Last week, Kansas State nearly upset Nebraska and Lincoln. Today, the Wildcats are home and stand in the way of the Buff drive for a third straight Big 8 championship. Channel 4 Sports presents CU Buffaloes football. Live from KSU Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, it's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the Kansas State University Wildcats. Welcome to Manhattan, Kansas, everybody. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan. You heard just now Bill McCartney say, despite that convincing win over Oklahoma last week, the Buffs are not there yet. Dave, exactly how far along are they? Well, they're, I think, quite, uh, quite a ways along, and I don't know that they're that far away, to tell you the truth. I think Bill McCartney is concerned that with such a young team, after such an emotional win on the road against a team like Oklahoma, uh, he wants to regain their attention. By saying that, and there's still some room to improve, obviously, but by saying that we're not there yet, he gets everybody's attention. Well, maybe the Buffs shouldn't be too overconfident today. They come in without four starters in the lineup. Receivers Rico Smith and Mark Henry are out with injuries. Dolan Jackson, an offensive lineman, stayed back in Boulder to work on his academics. And Craig Anderson has a bad ankle. Well, that's really nothing new to this Colorado football team this year. They've had 23 new faces. 23 guys got their career start, their first career start this year. The last couple of years, 22 combined. So they're used to plugging guys in and out. With a young team, you have to be versatile, you have to be deep, and guys are going to get a lot of playing time. They are missing some offensive starters, but they still have the main man here in Kansas. They've got Darian Hagan at quarterback. Well, Darian Hagan had such a terrific game against Oklahoma, 211 yards of total offense, and he, without question, is the guy to make the CU offense go. go. If he's as accurate today as he was against Oklahoma, this Colorado offense will be able to move the football. You referred to the CU depth. They certainly have plenty of it. In fact, at wide receiver, you've got a guy who's contributed quite a bit in Michael Westbrook as a backup. He's made so many big plays, and this is redshirt freshman year. He reminds me, I think, and will continue to the next three years, of a bigger version of Michael Pritchard. Got big playability, loves to run with the football, and he has become one of the favorite targets of Darian Hagan. We expect Kansas State to pass the ball quite a bit today to try and beat the Buffs in the air, and if that's the case, the CU defensive backs are very, very jacked up. They're looking for a few picks today, I think. Well, they've had an interception in the last 12 games, so certainly they've been able to play good defense, and when you play a team like Kansas State, you know that you're going to get your fair share of work as a defensive back. That's the challenge in front of them to make sure they don't give up big plays. And, of course, they've got a great collection of athletes back there to do the job. Led by number 27, who you're seeing right here, Greg Thomas. Now, as we said, Kansas State will go to the air. They've got a pretty good guy to throw the ball. Paul Watson, the senior quarterback. Well, the thing that I think that makes Watson so very, very tough, he's able to avoid the rush. So, so when Colorado comes with a lot of different blitz packages, Paul Watson can get outside the pocket, scramble, and, and look for another receiver. He had 46 attempts last week in Nebraska. They did a good job blocking up front, and he's got a fine core of receivers to throw to. He certainly does, and that core is led by number 88, Michael Smith, an All-American candidate. Doesn't have great speed. Started out his career actually as a possession kind of receiver, but has turned into a big play guy. Had 10 receptions last week against Nebraska. All right, it's CU at 4-2 and two against Kansas State. Also 4-2, and two, and we'll be right back with the kickoff. Today's game is brought to you by Subway Shops, your Denver area Honda dealers, and Athletic Club, Inverness and Monaco. This year, the competition is rolling out several new cars they'd like you to think are just like the Honda Accord. We think they missed the point. The Honda Accord. Still the best value for the money. 
Fisher, Frontier Long, John Elway, Mile High, Ralph Shomp, Classic, and Empire. Arnold Palmer at home in America. 1929, that was the year I was born. The tractor, well, that came along a little later. And Pennzoil, well, that goes back to my dad. That was his motor oil. I'll tell you, you couldn't be around him long without learning the value of keeping the equipment running. And you know, everything around here is still working. Pennzoil, ever since America learned to drive. I hope when people see Subway, bells go off and they think, good sandwich. We don't deep fry or freeze dry, everything's fresh. Each morning I slice tomatoes, onions, I even bake the bread. These days people think a lot about what food to eat. Nothing's more honest than a good sandwich. So if the body's a temple, this is the place to come when a temple gets hungry. For some of the best sandwiches anywhere, visit the Subway near you. After 5 p.m., buy any regular footlong in soda and get the second footlong for 99 cents. We're slashing prices on over $7 million of truck inventory at the Chesron Automotive Group. How about a new Nissan truck? Just $59.99 at Marshall Nissan and Boulder. Marshall Ford and Boulder has a four-door Ford Explorer, just $15,999. The tough diesel Cummins 4x4 truck, just $15,999 at Southwest Dodge. And Chesron Chevrolet has a new Chevy truck, just $59.99. Plus, every truck has 5.9% financing available. Take the trick. Every Chesron dealership has slashed their prices to the bone. Guaranteed. You're looking at KSU Stadium, also known as Wagner Field here in Manhattan, Kansas. The stadium opened in 1968. Seats about 42,000. We'll have about 32,000 here in the stands today. It's parents' weekend at Kansas State University. One of those in attendance is our Mark McIntosh on the field. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You know, you guys have talked about Darian Hagan and the great ball game he had last week. Interesting footnote to that ball game last week, right before the ball game. The Buffs are on their bench. The Oklahoma fans are right behind them. The fans are very close to the benches down there in Norman. They're giving the Buffs all kinds of trouble. Darian Hagan walks behind the bench, holds up the Buffs national championship ring from last year, also holds up three fingers as in three feet. The fans are giving him all kinds of trouble. Hagan says champions aren't intimidated. And he played great down there last night. A footnote, not last week, not last night. Footnote on Hagan. He's two touchdown passes away from tying Steve Vogel for the career touchdown pass mark of 27. Two more passes also ties Vogel's single season mark of 12. I was talking to the defensive coordinator from K-State, Jim Levitt, before the ball game. I asked him, how do you stop Hagan? He said, the only way to stop Hagan, you hope he wakes up with a cold and doesn't suit up for the ball game. Back upstairs to you guys. Mark, don't go anywhere. I have a question for you. That new artificial turf that was installed just this past summer, is it wet? Because we got a lot of rain here last night. It is wet, but the turf is fast. It's, like you said, a brand new surface. It's very spongy. It is a little wet, but I was talking to Jim Hansen last night, and he said that's good because with a new turf, it's very abrasive. And now that it's a little wet, it won't be so hard on the elbows down here. All right, thanks, Mark. Dave Logan, you watched a lot of the receivers in the pregame warm-up. Did it look like they were having any trouble with their traction down there? Well, I think, uh, as Mark said, the, the turf being a little bit wet probably will be an advantage to the passing team. Uh, receivers know exactly where they're going. The defense has to react to what they see. So if the turf is a little more wet than normal, I think the passing uh, game of both teams will be benefited. All right, you see the CU Buffs warming up down there. Starting offense, huddled on the field. CU will be receiving the opening kickoff. Bit of an overcast day here in Manhattan. Clouds billowing above the field. The temperature is 62 degrees. The humidity, 88% with a slight chance of rain. The winds are out of the north at five miles an hour. These two teams have a long series history between them. CU leads that series, 34 wins to 12 losses. CU, however, with the last six wins, and they have outscored Kansas State in those last six games, 299 to 31. A look at CU head coach Bill McCartney in his 10th year with the Buffs. His record, 61, 48, and 2. And the head coach of Kansas State, a man rebuilding a program that was considered one of the worst in the country until he got here. Bill Snyder. 
in his third year at Kansas State, a record so far of 10 and 18. And last year, he was the Associated Press Big Eight Coach of the Year. Kicking off for Kansas State will be number 39, Warren Klassen. Just put the ball up on the tee. And returning the kickoff for the Buffs will be number 28, Eric Mitchell. And number nine, Charles Johnson. Also 47, Chris Hudson. And it is Hudson fielding the ball at his own seven yard line. Looking for the right sideline. Brought down at about the 17. Making the tackle for Kansas State is Oliver Salmons, a freshman. And out comes Darian Hagan to lead the CU offense. Senior out of Los Angeles. And there are his season stats. He's a 59% passer on the year. 10 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Doesn't run the ball too badly either. 264 yards on the ground for Darian so far this year. First and 10 for the Buffs from their own 17-yard line. Kansas State lines up with five defensive linemen and two linebackers. A bit unconventional. The give goes to the fullback, James Hill, who bullies his way up across the 30 to about the 31, and we have a flag on the field. Brooks Barta made the tackle for Kansas State. So the call will go against Kansas State. A face mask, and the Buffs pick up another five yards. So they're at the 36 right now. Here's your lineup for the Buffs. Charles Johnson at one receiver spot. Jay Lewinberg, the All-American center, leads the offensive lineman. It's a shuffled offensive lineup without two of the starters on the line. It's first and 10 for the Buffs from their own 36. Again to the first man through James Hill, and he picks up three, four yards, brought down by Tony Williams. There is the Kansas State starting lineup, Elijah Alexander, their top defensive lineman. The linebackers are Boone and Barta. And in the defensive backfield, last, led by last year's Big 8 Defensive Newcomer of the Year, Jamie Mendez. He had six interceptions last year. It'll be second and seven for the Buffs from their own 39. The pitch goes to Lamont Warren. He gets about four yards. It'll be third down for the Buffs. William Price, the defensive back for K-State, makes the tackle. And Brooks Barter. Well, you've seen Colorado come out the first couple of plays, try to establish the fullback. They did such a good job last week in Norman at running the option, and they got to the perimeter game, both Warren and Darian Hagan. So you want to come back and establish that fullback and make certain those inside linebackers stay at home, at least initially. Darian Hagan, 218 all-purpose yards a game. Hagan called timeout, saw something he didn't like. That's the advantage, really, of having a senior quarterback, a guy who's been through the wars. You see him signaling right there. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh will enlighten us on what just happened. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. As Dave was talking about, they're trying to establish the fullback early. The, the overall game plan is to try to hurt him with the option, but, of course, you got to get that fullback run inside to set up the outside game. It's a big ball game for James Hill. I was talking to, to John Riston before the ball game. He's the CU Buff fullbacks coach, and he was saying... James Hill's got to establish himself today. You know, he's been banged up the last few ball games. He hasn't really established himself as the buff starting fullback lately, and it's important for James Hill to come out here and show everybody that he is the ball player that can be that fullback for the CU Buffs, and he carried the ball in the first two series, the first two plays. So they'll get that inside game established and try to go outside with the option with Hick. Back up step. Thanks, Mark. Hill, of course, didn't play last week against Oklahoma, suffering from a concussion. It's third and three. Hagan on the option, keeps it, and gets across midfield with a flag on the field. Hagan's helmet ripped off on that play. 
was 33, Roger Green. Number 44, Brooks Martin. This may be a holding call in Colorado from where the flag came in. Blocking below the knees, as you see. So that call goes against the Buffs. You can wipe out that gain by Hagen. Well, it all comes back, but Darian Hagen again exercising the patience. Watch how long he stretches this option play. It looks like it's going to go for not. Good job blocking there the block from the outside. As a wide receiver, when you come back in a crackback block, you must stay up. You can't block below the knees. The penalty puts the Buffs back at their own 30-yard line, so it'll be third and 16. In the ballgame now for the Buffs at one wide receiver spot, Robbie James. They'll go with three wide receivers, James, Charles Johnson, and Michael Westbrook. Going deep to Westbrook or Johnson. It was off of Johnson's hands. Both receivers were in the area. Hard to tell which receiver it was intended for. Well, it was intended for Charles Johnson, who ran a hook and go from the slot. The ball well thrown. Hagen really took a shot after he let it go. This is a pass. See if you can see Darian Hagen, the rollout. And he'll take one just as he lets the football go. The ball's right on the money. And Charles Johnson has got to come up with his catch. A fairly tough adjustment, but that's a ball that has to be caught. Fourth down for the Buffs. Mitch Berger back to punt. And to receive it for Kansas State is Michael Smith, their All-American candidate at wide receiver. Berger with an end over end, a bit short. But it takes a CU bounce. And the Buffs finally down it at the Kansas State 32-yard line. Berger with a 32-yard punt and no return. Mitch Berger, I think, felt the pressure there and didn't get that leg completely extended. And Kansas State got exactly what they wanted to start this game out. A good defensive series. They stopped Colorado initially, and they get their offense on the field. Kansas State offense led by Paul Watson. He threw for 340 yards last week against Nebraska. The Wildcats almost pulled off an upset against the Huskers. They lose 38-31. Right off the bat, they go to Eric Gallon, their tailback. And Gallon squeaks over the 35-yard line up to about the 38. Here's the rest of the K-State offense. Pretty good pair of receivers led by Michael Smith. The running backs are Madden, Gallon, and the tight end is Campbell. And your front line led by sophomore Quentin Newyear at center. Last year was a freshman. He was an all-Big 8 honorable mention at center. Right behind CU's Jay Lewenberg, the first-team center. A gain of five on that last play, so it's second and five for Kansas State. Watson completes his first pass of the day to Michael Smith. Ronnie Bradford wrestled him down. Bradford, the junior out of Adams City. Adams City High School. Here's the Buffs defensive line led by preseason All-American candidate Joel Steed. Renfro and Elder flank him. The linebackers are Wolfhart, Beaker, Ted Johnson, and Chad Brown. And the defensive backs who are going to see a lot of action today. Deion Figures, Eric Hamilton, the co-captain, Greg Thomas, and Ronnie Bradford. A first down for Kansas State at its own 47. Three wide receivers in the game, but they run the ball. This is Gallon with a nice hole across midfield. And gets it inside the Buffs 40-yard line before Greg Beekert knocks him out of bounds. Eric Gallon is a junior out of Lakeland, Florida. We talked about the advantages of having Darian Hagan, a senior quarterback for the Buffs. Paul Watson, also a senior, audible at the line of scrimmage. He spread the defense out, Colorado in a nickel package, and then the quick handoff to Eric Gallon. Once you break the line of scrimmage against a nickel package, no linebackers there. Gallon averaging of over 80 yards per game on the ground, and Kansas State is off the kind of start that Bill Snyder had hoped for. Another first down for Kansas State at the CU 39-yard line. This is Gallon again. 
escapes a tackle and falls down for a gain of about one yard. Ronnie Wolf forked the tackle. Of course, the Wildcats last week threw the ball 46 times, and I think a good decision by Bill Snyder. He knows he's got to control the football today and keep Darian Hagan and the Buff offense off the field as much as possible. Thus, you've seen the Wildcats try to come out and get that running game going a bit. Is it possible CU is worried so much about the pass that K-State is able to run on him? So far, second and ten. Watson complete. This time to Frank Hernandez. He's inside the 25, and there's a penalty flag down. Chris Hudson made the tackle, getting up slowly. And again, Paul Watson realizes that Hernandez is all by himself. Just takes the ball and throws it out. Colorado trying to change up defensively. You see Greg Thomas, as the ball was being snapped on his way out, Hudson with the tackle. The flag is being waved off, however, and Kansas State with another first down. When you play a team that likes to throw the ball a lot and moves receivers around, sometimes you can get too complex defensively. You can try to do too many things. And that time, the Buffs just did not have their defense in order. And everybody talks about Michael Smith, but Frank Hernandez caught passes worth more than 1,000 yards last year. You've got quite a few guys to worry about on this Kansas State offense. So another first down for K-State. They're at the CU 25-yard line. A good rush put on. Watson escapes. Gets rid of it. He lost the pass. Is it intercepted by figures? No. He caught the ball with one foot out of bounds. Watson just lost the handle. Well, a couple of things happen on this one play that I think will be interesting to watch from here on out. We talked about Paul Watson's escapability. He's a big guy, 205 pounds, and yet he can move around. Colorado that time on the blitz had a clear shot from the left side of the screen. Nobody picks up the blitzer. Watson will see him at the last minute. You see Greg Thomas unblocked. Watson gets out of the pocket, but the ball just sails out of his hands, and this looked like a punt. So it's second and 10 for the Wildcats. Watson intercepted by Chris Hudson. Hudson fumbles the ball as he's tackled. Are they calling it down? Yes, they're saying the Brown caused the fumble. So give an interception to Chris Hudson. The freshman redshirt out of Houston. Well, Paul Watson will do something here. He has not done much this year. That's simply make a bad throw. Threw it 46 times last week against Nebraska. Didn't throw one interception. Nobody around that except Chris Hudson. See you in his own defense. And that's the first turnover of the game. Hudson leads this Buff team with four interceptions on the year. Right now the score, 0-0. Zero, zero. And we're going to take a break from Manhattan. <laughs> has the best rates to your favorite cities. The Geo Metro XFI at 58 miles per gallon. It may just be the best way to fly. Your dreams, your big ideas, you want them all to come true. But can you depend on your bank to really help you through? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You give your all in all that you do. But can you depend on your bank to do the same for you? Yes, you can.
Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in Manhattan, Kansas. CU just intercepted a Kansas State pass. Chris Hudson did it. So the Buffs are on offense. On the pitch, Hagan to Lamont Warren. Not an advisable pitch, and Warren loses a couple extra yards back at the 15-yard line. Call the loss of eight. C.J. Masters rode Warren out of bounds. And again, we've talked about it this year. Darren Hagan has made so many crucial pitches in his career at Colorado. He's got supreme confidence in his ability. That quite a catch by Lamont Warren. It could have been a disastrous play for Colorado. Kansas State early has done a nice job of stringing out the option and not allowing Darian Hagan to make that precise cut to get upfield. This is the same Kansas State defense primarily that gave up 64 points to CU last year. A much better showing so far today. Hagan, the pass, intended for Sean Brown as tight end, but Brown couldn't hang out. So it'll be third and 18 for the Buffs. Darian Hagan last week, very, very sharp throwing the football. So far here today, He's had a couple of passes just a little bit off. Brown with a, an excellent effort. And you're seeing early in the game, I think, what that man expected. His team emotionally maybe not as charged up as they'd like to be. Oklahoma last week, Nebraska next week, but the important thing, Kansas State today. Third and 18. A lot of movement. The pitch goes to Warren. And he slips down on the turf. Back to about the line of scrimmage, the 15. And CU, for the second time today, will have to punt. And this crowd of about 32,000 is giving the K-State defense a standing ovation. They don't see this a lot here in Manhattan. At least they haven't seen it a lot in recent years. Back to punt for CU is Berger. And Michael Smith is the return man for K-State. Fields the punt at his own 38-yard line. A lot of white shirts in front of him, and he's brought down at the 42. You mentioned the Buffs possibly not being up for this emotionally. Bill McCartney did say to us last night, what goes up must come down, and his kids were really on an emotional high in the conference opener against Missouri, and then last week against 12th-ranked Oklahoma. So that's probably the greatest fear of the CU coaching staff today. Will the kids be ready for this one against Kansas State? That last punt went 47 yards, a return by Smith of four yards, and there's a flag on the field. The call goes against the Buffs. A holding call. Dave, if you're the coaches of CU, you've got to be concerned because this Kansas State game falls right in between the two biggies on the Big 8 calendar. Oklahoma last week, Nebraska next week. Oh, sure. And it, it's tough to manufacture that kind of emotion when you play Oklahoma and Nebraska. On the offense, three, three, three holding on the defense. So it's a holding call in Kansas State, but... When you play Oklahoma and Nebraska, you don't have to worry about emotionally being charged up for the game. But when you play a Kansas State team that you have certainly dominated the last six years, even though they played well last week in Nebraska, it's tough to get those kids ready to go. And you hope as a head coach that talent alone will allow you to win the game. Well, Bill Snyder's Wildcats are ready to go on offense here. First and 10 from their own 42. Watson with the play action. The pass is complete to the tight end, Russ Campbell. They're across midfield once again, moving the ball on the buffs. Down to the CU 45-yard line. Eric Hamilton and Dion figures the tackle. That's a play quite similar to several plays that Minnesota ran against Colorado. They got the tight end on a crossing route. Campbell is a big, strong tight end, able to catch those intermediate route passes. And when you see him at the line of scrimmage, it will remind you of the Iowa team. He'll stand up in a two-point stance. That's because, of course, Bill Snyder, a longtime offensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes under Hayden Fry. So this offense, in terms of their alignment, a little bit similar to Iowa's. First down, a quarterback sneak by Watson. And a flag down on the field. Unusual call on first down. Colorado offsides. Once they saw the offside, it was a 
play between the center and quarterback to snap it, and it worked. This is a play, when you see the movement by the white jersey, right there, the quarterback and center realize that the ball is going to be snapped, the penalty will be called, and you just pick up as many yards as you possibly can. So it's first down and five yards to go from Kansas State. They're at the Buffs 40-yard line. The fullback, Eric, or excuse me, Curtis Madden, Brought down by Earthquake, Marcellus Elder. Madden gets a couple of yards out of it. And Elder comes off the field. Hurting a bit. Brings up second and three. Again, Kansas State trying to establish that running game. Good job by Renfro taking on the trapping guard. And Elder there to finish him off. Second and three for Kansas State. This is a good time to go long, huh? Second down, short yardage in CU territory. Marcellus Elder being tended to by the trainers. Kansas State stays on the ground. That's Eric Gallen, and he's close to picking up the first down. Greg Beekert the stop, along with Corey Smith. Corey Smith in the ball game for the injured Elder now. Quite a few flags so far today. Let's see what this one is all about. Well, they, now they're measuring for first down here. And Kansas State has about six inches to go. Third and inches. You see Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, making the calls. Colorado will use a variety of nickel coverages today. Blitz packages, they'll try to throw Paul Watson that senior quarterback off a little bit but what you have to do obviously is stop the running game in order for that to work this time Watson sneaks I think it's going to be questionable whether or not he got it Ted Johnson hit him right away the CU freshman linebacker no he got it. he's well over the 35 yard line the initial surge I think got that first down so another first down for Kansas State they're at the Buffs 35 yard line. Paul Watson, a senior out of Kansas City. Here's how the two teams measure up against each other. The Colorado offense, 280 pounds on the average, and the Kansas State defense, just 248 pounds on the line. Watson sacked by Leonard Renfro. Call it a loss of a couple of yards. An excellent job by the Colorado defense. They came out in the two deep zone. Watson knew that right away, but they keep him in the pocket with good upfield pressure and then able to collapse as Watson tries to escape. It's Renfro's third sack on the year. So Kansas State with second and 12 at the CU 37 yard line. We have. 6.05 to go in the first quarter. No score so far. Setting up the screen. Complete to Gallon with blocking ahead of him. Finally brought down Greg, Greg Thomas. A nice reach to bring Gallon down by the back of the jersey. But Gallon is inside the CU 20-yard line. And it's another Kansas State first down. Well, a perfect call for this defense. You'll see Colorado with both linebackers blitzing. Watson continues to drop, and here comes the screen. If Quentin Newyear, number 72, blocks Greg Thomas, this might have been a touchdown. Nice job by Thomas getting off the block and spinning Gallon out of bounds. You see the Colorado rush, and sometimes when you gamble at getting to a quarterback and a play like that is called, you're going to come out a loser. First and 10 for K-State. At the Buffs, 17. Almost intercepted by Greg Beaker, right through his hands. Paul 
Watson so far today, four of seven for 57 yards. Almost threw his second interception there. Last year, he was the backup to Carl Straw, another pretty good quarterback here at Kansas State. Watson's had some nagging injuries throughout his career. This is his first year starting, although it is his senior year. Second and 10. Three wide receivers in the game. Straw into the end zone. Had his man Michael Smith wide open. Would have been six, but the ball a bit overthrown. So it'll be third down for Kansas State. But Colorado gambling that time. They blitz Greg Thomas, bottom left side of the screen, and that leaves Michael Smith one-on-one -on -one with Chris Hudson. The reason that ball is overthrown Watson had to throw it just before he wanted to because of the pressure. And there's the man that put on that pressure, Marcellus Elder, back in the ball game. The Kansas State crowd on its feet, trying to help out the offense. Flags thrown. Watson gets a pass off, again almost intercepted. Penalty will go against Kansas State. I tell you, these officials. You see Coleman running into the end zone wide open. That was going to be a screen pass, however, so he was never going to get the football. That's one of the problems that Bill Snyder faces with an offense like this. Once you get inside the 20-yard line, it tends to bog down because there's not as much territory to cover defensively, and thus. Those receivers are not quite as open as they are in other places. Kansas State is going to try a field goal right now, a 35-yarder. And Tate Wright will do the kicking. He's four for eight on the year so far. And this attempt is no good, wide to the right. Tate Wright has had his difficulties from this distance between the 30 and 40. He is only one of four on the year. So the score remains the same, 0-0, CU and Kansas State. We've got 5.33 to go in the first quarter. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back in Manhattan. I hope when people see Subway, bells go off and they think, good sandwich. We don't deep fry or freeze dry. Everything's fresh. Each morning, I slice tomatoes, onions. I even bake the bread. These days, people think a lot about what food to eat. Nothing's more honest than a good sandwich. So if the body's a temple, this is the place to come when a temple gets hungry. For some of the best sandwiches anywhere, visit the Subway near you. After 5 p.m., buy any regular footlong and soda and get the second footlong for 99 cents. This year, the competition is rolling out several new cars they'd like you to think are just like the Honda Accord. We think they missed the point. The Honda Accord. Still the best value for the money. Fisher, Frontier Longmont, John Elway, Mile High, Ralph Shomp, Classic, and Empire. At Cost Cutter, we know the right turn can do more than change your look. It can also change the way you feel. Our highly skilled stylist will give you the perm that's just right for you. And right now, at just $24.95, the right perm will give you a change you never expected. Cost cutters. We're your style. Part of the crowd here at KSU Field in Manhattan. You see the score. CU takes over on its own 20-yard line after the Kansas State missed field goal. James Hill, the CU fullback on the carry, brought down by Chris Patterson. Give Hill a gain of four yards. 
James Hill out of Whitefield High School in Colorado Springs. And there's a look at the man who brought him down, Chris Patterson. Second and six for the Buffs. Hagan, complete for a first down to Michael Westbrook. And Westbrook fights his way up to the 40-yard line. Well, he talked about his big play capabilities. This just a very easy throw by Darian Hagan. And it looks like Westbrook is going to go down. The initial shot, but at 6'3 and 205 pounds, he's able to shirk off a lot of defensive backs. Roger Green had the first chance. Michael Westbrook has turned into a big play guy for Colorado. This young man blossoming, especially now that he gets a start with Mark Henry and Rico Smith back home in Boulder. On first down, this is Lamont Warren trying to find some room along the line. But he's tackled by Roger Green, who was hurt. On the stop, number 33, Roger Green. Lamont Warren had a great game last week in Oklahoma. And as he matures as a running back, you realize that sooner or later, about right there, you're going to have to cut it up. Because as you run from sideline to sideline, you run into more trouble than not. Warren has terrific speed and also big play capabilities. A look at the CU sideline. Lamont Warren, we're going to take a break while Roger Green is 10 to 2 on the field. We'll be right back. The new 92 Honda Accord LX, value standard equipment, along with a driver's side airbag, air conditioning, power windows, power door locks, AM FM stereo cassette, cruise control, adjustable steering column, power antenna, dual power mirrors, and Michelin all season radials. That leaves just one option left for you to decide the color. The 92 Honda Accord LX, still the leader of the pack. Frontier Longmont, John Elway, Mile High, Classic, Empire, Fisher, Ralph Shomp. People see Subway, bells go off, and they think, good sandwich. We don't deep fry or freeze dry. Everything's fresh. Each morning, I slice tomatoes, onions. I even bake the bread. These days, people think a lot about what food to eat. Nothing's more honest than a good sandwich. So if the body's a temple, this is the place to come when a temple gets hungry. For some of the best sandwiches anywhere, visit the Subway near you. After 5 p.m., buy any regular footlong in soda and get the second footlong for 99 cents. 0-0, CU in Kansas State. It's second and six for the Buffs. Hagan looking for Sean Embry, the tight end, but incomplete. And you can see right now that Kansas State defensively is really gaining momentum. Colorado has not been able to generate any consistency in the offensive side. And the longer the Wildcats stay in this game and realizing we're still in the first quarter, the more momentum, the more confidence they will gain. A look at what Darian Hagan does per game. Right now, he's throwing the ball on third and six. Michael Westbrook gets it to the 50-yard line. Looks like he has the first down. Barta and Roderick Green, the tackle. Venables also in there. Kansas State doing a little blitzing of their own. You'll see the linebacker right up the gut. And a quick throw. Brent Venables did not get to Hagen and Westbrook with enough yardage for the first down. The Buffs sitting right at midfield. 4-10 to go. First quarter, no score. The option. But not much of an option. Not many places to go, so Hagen keeps it. Gets maybe two yards. Venables again on the tackle. 
Darian Hagan, last week in the first quarter against Oklahoma, three touchdown passes within three minutes, and the Buffs were on their way. Hagan hurt himself on this play. You'll see penetration, which is what you can't have. Killian almost gets him down, but Hagan took himself out of the game, and Vance Joseph is in a quarterback. The sophomore out of Marrero, Louisiana. He's going to come out throwing the screen to Westbrook with some room. Fumbles the ball. A lot of purple jerseys on top of it. Yes, Kansas State has it. Westbrook picked up first yardage, first down yardage, but fumbled the ball as he was coming down. This is a screen that Missouri ran against Colorado a couple of years ago. Wide receiver will slant over the middle, get behind the offensive lineman. Westbrook has good yardage, but does not wrap up the football. Patterson knocks it loose with the right hand, and nothing but purple on that one. Joseph with a very safe pass, getting the ball to Westbrook, who doesn't see Patterson from the blind side, and Kansas State with their first turnover of the game. Well, they're working on Darian Hagan's foot or ankle on the sideline. We'll get a report in a little bit. Right now, Kansas State with the ball. Watson. Incomplete. A nice play by Dion Figures to break up that pass. Figures got a hand on the ball, and there's a penalty flag down. Probably going to be a legal contact on Colorado. There you see a look at head trainer Dave Burton working on Darian Hagan. That's the foot of the CU starting quarterback. The call goes against the CU defense. It's an automatic first down for Kansas State. And once again, they're at midfield. They're at the 49-yard line. Their own 49. Flags down. Did Kansas State take too much time? No, they moved. Left tackle move. You're absolutely right. Set them back five yards. So it'll be first and 15. See you struggling in the early going against Kansas State, a rejuvenated Kansas State program here under the direction of Bill Snyder. Five wins last year. They've only had five wins in a year, twice in the last 17 seasons. Watson will throw. Completed after a deflection. The pass was caught by Gerald Benton, the little wide receiver out of Bradenton, Florida. The pass was deflected. Well, Benton is the fastest Kansas State Wildcat. He's a guy that you have to respect because of that speed. But Bradford almost makes a nice interception, and Benton does a terrific job of hanging on to the football. Ronnie Bradford gets both hands in the ball, tips it, and then Benton, before he takes the blow from Hamilton, gathers the football in. First down for Kansas State at the CU 36. Gallon. Drag down inside the 35. A gain of a couple. Ronnie will fork the tackle. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. You can see Darian Hagan right in front of you. They're working on his right ankle. That's not the ankle that was injured. They just got done taping up his left ankle. He just turned it. He should be all right, and I expect him back on the next series of downs for the CU offense. Back upstairs. All right, so Hagan should be back, according to Mark McIntosh. Right now, Kansas State has the ball. Second and eight at the CU 34. Again, a nice rush. Watson incomplete to Gallon. Watson hit hard. The rush was put on once again by Leonard Renfro, who already has one sack in this game. So it'll be third and eight for K State. 
brings up third and eight, 34 yard line. I tell you, this game really, not only in Colorado, but the game doesn't have much emotion on either side. Kansas State able to move a little bit offensively, but the crowd doesn't seem to be in, into the contest. Kansas State has been deep in CU territory twice. The first time, Watson was intercepted by Chris Hudson. The second time, the Wildcats tried a field goal and failed. Third and eight. Watson. Brought down by Chad Brown. I think you can call that a sack because I think K-State lost a yard on the play. Chad Brown, if it is in fact a sack, that would be six and a half sacks on the year for him and he leads this team. Let's go back to the sideline and Mark McIntyre. All right, once again, back to Darian Hagan. As you see, working on the right shoe, what they're doing, shades of Missouri last year, the buff players are switching to a longer cleat. Although it is a new artificial turf, it's a little slippery out here over the, about the range last night. The guys were having trouble keeping their traction out there, so Darian Hagan has switched to a longer cleat, and he's hoping that'll give him better traction once he gets back out there on the field. Back up to you guys. Fourth down, and K-State is going to go for it. It's fourth and nine. K-State has called for delay of game right here. The starting offensive unit. Ball, delay of game, offense, five yards, repeat, fourth down. I was just about to say the starting offense still on the field, but it looks like right now K-State will do a switch and bring out the punting team. That's exactly what they do. Sean Snyder is the punter, and Chris Hudson will be returning it for the Buffs. Snyder gets off a nice one. Angling out of bounds, and that one will be placed inside the 10-yard line at the CU 7-yard line. A 32-yard punt. It sounds short, but it was awfully pretty. Now, does Darian Hagan come out onto the field to quarterback the Buffs? Yes, he will. Getting some last-second instructions from the CU coaching staff. Darian Hagan back in the ballgame after switching to a longer cleat because of the slippery conditions here at Wagner Field. One twenty-nine to go in the first quarter. No score. The tailback, Lamont Warren, gets the call. And maybe one yard. Sean Dabney, the tackle. As good a push as Colorado got last week in Norman up front, they are not getting much up front today so far. You can see penetration before Warren even gets to the line of scrimmage. And a good job from the right side of the defensive front Sean Dabney and Kansas State has certainly helped themselves in a lot of ways but they've been able to get much bigger on both sides of the ball and playing very inspired ball today this is Warren escapes well, five or six Wildcats had a shot at him he ended up taking it across the 20 before William Price finally brought him down boy Lamont Warren is going to be some kind of running back these are moves right here you can't teach. Watch this. A pirouette in open field. Try to do that on a dry field and then try to do it on a wet surface. Picks up about 14 yards on that play for a first down. The bus at their own 22. First man through James Hill. Nowhere. Big Evan Simpson the stop. Five foot 11. On the stop, but pulling along 315 pounds on that frame. Well, he's not going to go very far. And Jay Lewenberg tries to get his body out in front. But Simpson, as you mentioned, well over 300 pounds. Tough to get a push on him. Simpson. Guess what his favorite TV show is? Gosh, I have no idea. The Simpsons. Really? Makes sense. Second and ten. Official stop play. And that's the end of the first quarter. 
We have no score in Manhattan, Kansas. CU zero, K-State zero. I have a, a personal attachment to my vehicles. I started out with Chevrolets, and they'll probably bury me with Chevrolets. I've had uh, everything from a Chevette to a Corvette, and I love the S10. I can't say enough about the 4.3 Vortec motor. The truck has so much power for its size. The fit and finish uh, is, is real good on my S10. It's a work truck, it's a sport truck, and it's the best truck that you can buy. It's my truck, and I'm going to keep it that way. I love the S10. What's this? Do you think tortilla chips are a big snack? Big deal. Big is the zesty taste of these little Gino's pizza rolls. Mmm. They've got everything that makes you crazy about pizza, wrapped up in a hot little bite-sized snack. So why go for a whole flotilla of tortilla chips when you can sink your teeth into the one with big taste? Gino's pizza rolls, the pizza way to snack. Today's game is brought to you by Subway Shops, by Cellular One, and by your Denver area Honda dealers. Back in Manhattan, Kansas, there's your score, and let's go to Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. I'm sure you guys have been hearing the roar of this crowd of about 32,000. That's about twice as many people that were here the last time CU played in Manhattan. And there's good reason. Of course, we've talked a lot about the rejuvenation of this K-State football program. And today, scouts from the Freedom Bowl and Copper Bowl are here to take a look at the K-State Wildcats. They've got a legitimate shot of finishing this year 7-4. and four. Back up to you guys. That is nice testimony to what Bill Snyder has done here at Kansas State. This program, in more than 100 years of football, has only gone to one bowl game, the Independence Bowl, under Jim Dickey. In 1982, one bowl game in more than 100 years. Right now, CU with the ball, second and 10 from its own 22. We're starting the second quarter. Hagan keeps it. Picks up four yards. Jamie Mendez wrote him out. 32, Jamie Mendez. For Jamie Mendez has been a very good player at free safety, and anytime you get involved with teams that like to get their quarterback into the running game. Free safety is of our a paramount importance. Mendez, a good tackler. And more times than not, when Darian Hagan comes down that line running the option, he'll see number 32 in a purple jersey. It's third and five, and into the ball game for CU is a deep threat, Eric Mitchell. He's lined up wide at the top of your screen. The Buffs going with three wide receivers right now. And Hagan will look for Michael Westbrook. He gets first down yardage, keeps fighting. Stopped at about the 45 by C.J. Masters. Why Westbrook came into this game with 10 catches for 152 yards and four touchdowns and having a fine day today. Hagan just takes the easy throw. Westbrook all by himself. And again, when he catches a football, he thinks about picking up yards. Makes the first K-State tackler miss and then, of course, gets grounded but Michael Westbrook is not a guy that catches the ball and goes down easily he is a bull six foot three two hundred and five pounds and when he has it he runs it like a fullback see you from their own 45 and an offensive lineman jumps off side that's Jason Perkins dead ball Illegal procedure, offense, five yards, repeat, first down. Buffs have done a lot of shuffling on that offensive line this week. Jason Perkins doesn't usually start. They've had to do some shuffling because Craig Anderson and Dolan Jackson, two usual starters, are not in the ballgame. First and 15 for the Buffs. Hagan himself. Picks up six yards on the play. Tony Williams, the stop. If you take a look right there at some of the guys on the defensive line for Kansas State, they've got some big bodies. They're able to stand in there and really hold their own. And that's something that this crowd is not used to over the years. Kansas State has been very, very small on the offensive and defensive lines. That's one of the things that Bill Snyder has improved the last couple of years. 
They go 265, 275, 265. With three across the front for Kansas State. It's second and nine. Hagan off balance. Incomplete. The intended receiver, Westbrook. That was a tough pass to make. That's a very dangerous pass. Kansas State bringing the blitz. They force Darian Hagan out of the pocket, and he tries to throw all the way back across the field. You see Boone on the inside blitz. Ivy tries to get him, but this is a dangerous throw. And William Price, the defensive back, gets to the ball just about the same time as it arrives to Michael Westbrook. Brooks Smart on the coverage there. Leading tackler for Kansas State. He was one of the guys involved in the blitz. Well, Craig Anderson, who normally starts, has come into the ballgame for CU. He turned an ankle earlier in the week in practice. Getting a little better. That time, Hagen's pass batted down. So it'll be fourth down. The pass batted down by that man right there, Reggie Blackwell. Very active defensively for Kansas State. Blackwell from the right side of your screen will get his left hand on the football. Hagen didn't get good depth that time on the play action fake and was actually throwing the ball about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Mitch Berger, who has averaged 43 yards a punt today, will do it again. And Michael Smith back to receive for Kansas State. Berger gets off a good one. Smith calls for a fair catch at about his own 13-yard line. A punt of 40 yards without a return. We're going to take a break. Still no score with 12.40 to go in the second quarter. And you're on your way to work, and you're in your car. And it's a small car, but that's okay, you know, because it gets good gas mileage. But then this guy in this great big car comes by. So, whoa! And then he runs out of gas on the bridge. Now you're stuck in traffic. And today's the day you got that big presentation with graphs and things. But luckily, you have a cellular phone. So you call the tow truck, and you say, hey, tow truck, I got this guy in front of me. Get him out of here. With the new 92 Honda Accord LX, value is standard equipment. Along with a driver's side airbag, air conditioning, power windows, power door locks, AM FM stereo cassette, cruise control, adjustable steering column, power antenna, dual power mirrors, and Michelin all-season radials. That leaves just one option left for you to decide. The color. The 92 Honda Accord LX. Still the leader of the pack. Frontier Longmont. John Elway. Mile High. Classic. Empire. Fisher. Ralph Schomp. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan back in Manhattan, Kansas. K-State giving Colorado a run for its money. The Buffs came in here ranked 16th in the nation. Fumble. I think Colorado has the ball. You're right. That's what the Zebras say. CU does have the ball deep in Kansas State territory. Well, this is not the first time it's happened to Kansas State this year. Paul Watson just unable to get the snap. You saw it hit his left hand. And the ball is under the center, who doesn't even know it. Quentin Newyear doesn't know the ball is loose. I think Jeff Bruner came away with the recovery. This is the deepest CU has had the ball in Kansas State territory. Here's the turnover story today. This one a biggie, though. At the 13-yard line. Lamont Warren, a nice hole up the middle. Inside the 10, down to about the 7. Call it a gain of 6. Colorado lining up in the I formation. Lamont Warren, a classic style of tailback, just slides through the hole. CU's had trouble running the option so far here today, and when that happens, it usually means either you're not getting good blocking up front or the linebackers are flowing too quickly. And the best way to stop that is to run right at them. Bill McCartney wetting his whistle a little. 
Very concerned coming into this game. I think he was more concerned about his own players than he was Kansas State. Whether they would be up for this game. Coming in between games against Oklahoma and Nebraska. But we're finding out Kansas State no longer is a pushover. A few CU fans along for the ride. It wasn't too bad a plane trip, about an hour in the air. We've got 12-16 to go in the first half. It's 0-0, but CU knocking on the door. saw the official saying he's requested the cooperation of the K-State band to stop playing when Colorado has the football. Very, very popular statement here. So now the fans are going to pick up where the band left off. The fans are on their feet making as much or more noise than the marching band did. It's second and four for the Buffs. Lamont Warren again. There's room on the outside and he gets in for the score. Right, that'll quiet a crowd down quickly. Lamont Warren takes it in for the first points of the day. Well, this play was designed to go over the right side, but Warren, sensing that he had good blocking backside, able to curl it underneath, and then just outruns the Kansas State defense. Jim Harper in for the extra point attempt. And Jimmy's got it. So the Buffs draw first blood. CU 7, Kansas State nothing. Lamont Warren did the dirty work for CU, and we'll be right back. Well, here's a replay. We're back already. Take a look at it. Lamont Warren again, designed to go to the right side. A good job there by Derek West, the left tackle of sealing that weak side and allowing a guy with that kind of speed to get into the end zone and <laughs> run over a cheerleader. Lamont Warren really has come into his own the last couple of weeks. Warren got the start against Oklahoma last week, his first start as a CU buff. Went for 81 yards, scored a touchdown. A high school All-American from Inglewood, California. He is a glider. I think that would be the best way to describe his running style. He glides through the hole and much, much stronger than you would think an 18-year-old freshman would be. He's talented in other respects. Musically, he plays the viola. I don't know if he plays it well, but he plays the viola. He's a glider kind of viola player. <laughs> glides up and down those strings. All right, so CU is kicking off. Mitch Berger does it. And a return for Kansas State. Andre Coleman and William Price. This kick goes out of bounds, which draws a penalty flag. K-State has a choice here. Let's see what they choose to do. Illegal procedure on the kickoff. Kansas State chooses the ball at the 35. First down. All right, so instead of making CU kick the ball over with a chance at a return, Kansas State opts to take the ball at its own 35-yard line. Here's the last CU scoring drive, the only CU scoring drive after the recovered fumble. It took the Buffs two plays to go 13 yards for the score. Let's reset the Kansas State offense for you. Paul Watson is the quarterback. Eric Gallon, Curtis Madden, the running backs. Michael Smith and Frank Hernandez are the receivers. This time, Gallon will run it. Jukes and jives his way up to the 45-yard line. First down yardage, a gain of 10. I'll tell you, this is a pretty good run. Eric Gallon hips and he hops and he picks up the defensive rush on the draw play. Not bad penetration by the Colorado defense, and Gallo will decide as to where he wants to go, and he gets there rather quickly. 
And Kansas State going with a no huddle offense. Paul Watson will call the play at the line of scrimmage based on what he sees defensively. Gallon again reaches out to the 47. Call it a gain of three. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. But hey, they have not been forgotten. You see right there, number 25 for Mark Henry, number 86 for Rico Smith, home with injuries, but Michael Westbrook and the Buffs haven't forgotten him. Back up to you guys. Well, I'm sure Mark and Rico are back home, and they appreciate that move by Michael Westbrook. In the meantime, first and 10 for Kansas State. Watson will run it. And he'll get some yardage before he goes down inside the CU 40. And another first down for the Wildcats. And Michael Smith is hurt. You see the wide receiver for the K-State Wildcats. He got tangled up with Greg Thomas trying to block for Paul Watson. and looked like he twisted his leg. Watson, with a nice play-action fake, will get Chad Brown to bite inside, and once he passes number 34, there is nobody else out there for contain. There's where Smith and Thomas got tangled up. Watson picked up the first down, but you don't want to lose your best receiver. And you can see, as Greg Thomas tried to tackle Paul Watson, he rolled up in the right ankle of Michael Smith. Smith gets up, walks off the field on his own. You see the end of that last run by Paul Watson. Smith is up on his own feet. Got to the sideline under his own power. K-State with another first down on that play. They're at the Buffs 38-yard line. Three wide receivers. Gerald Benton in the game for Michael Smith. Eric Gallen up the middle for some room. Inside the 20, down to the Buffs 11-yard line. Excuse me, 16-yard line. But the Wildcats doing a good job up front controlling the CU defensive line, and they've had a nice mixture of run and pass. This time, a little slip handoff, and you can see Gallon once he breaks through, you've got defensive backs instead of linebackers. The Buffs in a nickel package, and Eric Hamilton has to bring Eric Gallon down. Gallon has run the ball eight times for 60 yards today. From the Buffs, 16, Straw. Intended for number 80, Brian Lochka, tight end. And Paul Watson got dumped. It's okay to stand in there, but when you have linebackers, you'd prefer they at least get blocked a little bit. Ronnie Wolfork and Chad Brown got to Watson just as he delivered the football. Unblocked. Second and 10 for K-State. 10-17 to go in the first half. The Wildcats trying to tie it up here. They're down 7 0 nothing to see you. Eric Gallen. Brought down quickly by a couple of buffs. It's Joel Steed and Leonard Renfro. They throw Gallen for a loss of three yards. Gallon apparently has hurt his left leg. But staying in the game. Oh, well, now they they wanted to pull him out, but Gallon waved off his substitute and he stays in. And once again, Kansas State in the no huddle. Intercepted by Beaker. Beaker. With his first interception of the year, gets it back to the 21-yard line. Well, he almost got one earlier this game. Paul Watson never sees number 19. He's trying to get the football in the curl pattern to Frank Hernandez, and you can see him eyeing the receiver. Excuse me, tried to get the football inside to Gerald Benton. Beaker got good depth in the drop. It's amazing as you watch the game. It's hard to believe that a quarterback would not see a guy standing right in the middle of the field, but believe me, there are many times they just can't. And that was one of them. So Kansas State has missed a field goal from close in and thrown two interceptions close in. The Buffs with the ball. Hagan bounces a pass to Westbrook. 
Boy, Michael Westbrook has quickly turned into Darian Hagan's favorite receiver. Got quarterbacks and receivers, once they have success, they like to hook up, and a quarterback will go to a guy that's been catching the football, making big plays. That time, Hagan just underthrew Westbrook, who was wide open. Second and ten. Full house backfield behind Hagen, three running backs. This goes to Lamont Warren. He gets it across the 25 to about the 28. Call a gain of six. Derek McBride, the tackle. Warren deep in the eye again, looking to cut back. Pretty good push there by the CU offensive line. Third and five for the Buffs. Lamont Warren having a fair day. 35 yards so far. Once again, the Kansas State crowd on its feet to spur on the defense. Hagan complete to Sean Brown. Brown brought down quickly. Looks like the Buffs are going to get a good mark on the play. But it doesn't matter because it's still fourth down. Kansas State defensively has taken a lot of chances here so far early in the game. Hagan play action fake. He's got people in his face. Jamie Mendez knows because of the blitz package, he's got the tight end man to man. And therefore, he can anticipate this throw and gets a good jump on the ball. You see C.J. Masters from the corner spot blitzing Hagan, who had to get rid of the football. Mitch Berger with the punt. Gerald Benton receives it at his own 25. He's a speedster but can't generate anything here because a number of black and gold jerseys bring him down at about the 36-yard line. Call it a return of 10. We're going to take a break with CU leading 7-zip. I hope when people see Subway, bells go off and they think, good sandwich. We don't deep fry or freeze dry. Everything's fresh. Each morning, I slice tomatoes, onions. I even bake the bread. These days, people think a lot about what food to eat. Nothing's more honest than a good sandwich. So if the body's a temple, this is the place to come when a temple gets hungry. For some of the best sandwiches anywhere, visit the Subway near you. After 5 p.m., buy any regular footlong in soda and get the second footlong for 99 cents. Imagine you're on your way to work and you're in your car. And it's a small car, but that's okay, you know, because it gets good gas mileage. But then this guy in this great big car comes by. So, whoa! And then he runs out of gas on the bridge. Now you're stuck in traffic. And today's the day you got that big presentation with graphs and things. But luckily you have a cellular phone. So you call the tow truck and you say, hey, tow truck, I got this guy in front of me. Get him out of here. This year, the competition is rolling out several new cars they'd like you to think are just like the Honda Accord. We think they missed the point. The Honda Accord. Still the best value for the money. Fisher, Frontier Longmont, John Elway, Mile High, Ralph Schaub, Classic, and Empire. Well, there's your score for Manhattan. Colorado 7, Kansas State nothing. A lot of other action around the Big 8. Everybody's playing today. Missouri is at Nebraska, and right now the Huskers lead 21 to 6 in the second quarter. Kansas is playing at Oklahoma, and the Sooners lead that one 14 to nothing in the first quarter. And the other Big 8 game today is Oklahoma State at Iowa State. No score in the second quarter. Other regional games for us in Colorado. CSU is at Wyoming, and UTEP is at Air Force this afternoon. Right now, CU has the ball. Excuse me, Kansas State has the ball. First and 10 from its own 36 after the CU punt. Watson complete to Michael Smith, who has come back into the game. Excuse me, that's not Michael Smith. He's 88. Number 28 is Andre Coleman. You're seeing Kansas State go without a huddle. They're trying to limit how many substitutions Colorado can make. And right now, the only linebacker in the game is Greg Beaker. Six defensive backs in the game for the Bucks. That's the fullback, Curtis Madden, being brought down across the 45. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntyre. 
Thank you, guys. You know, we've talked a lot about CU and maybe coming into this ballgame a little flat. Well, K-State coach Bill Snyder was concerned also about the emotional level of his ball club. Two weeks ago, they had a big win here at home against Kansas. Last week, that tough loss to Nebraska on the road, and he was curious whether or not his team could get up three straight weeks for a big ball game. And so far, they've been able to do it. Back up to you guys. Another first down for Kansas State. The Wildcats at their own 46. The pass is complete. Kansas State once again across midfield. That time it was Michael Smith back in the ball game after turning an ankle. We've talked about his big capabilities, his big play capabilities. Michael Smith will do something here that good receivers do. Watch him come back to the football. Separates just a little bit from Deion Figures and creates the opening for Watson to fit that football into. When your quarterback is in trouble, you got to give him a target. You got to present the numbers to him, and Smith certainly did on that play. That was a nine yard reception, so it's second and one. Kansas State at the CU 45 yard line. Watson will run it inside the 40. He gets the first down. In fact, he gets about seven yards before Joel Steed falls on him. That was a quarterback draw. Paul Watson just bounced back on his fifth step, took off. You'll see him right there with the lead back, getting a pretty good block on Beaker. That's Curtis Madden. Watson, a good enough runner that Bill Snyder comfortable with that call. Good rush put on by the Buffs. Ronnie Wolfork and Greg Thomas sandwich Watson for a loss back at about the 49. He loses 10, 11 yards on that play. Good job by Wolfork and also Greg Thomas right side of the screen. Wolfork will run right over Curtis Madden who tried to get a piece of him and just couldn't keep him off Paul Watson. And a good job downfield by the CU secondary. Nobody was open initially. Kansas State has a second and 21 yards to go. Screen pass to Madden. Greg Thomas hits him first. Down to the CU 42 yard line. Gain of about seven. It'll still be third down and long yardage. I still cannot get over how quiet this crowd is between plays. They're, they're almost reverent. I'm very surprised also considering Kansas State is well into this ballgame. Down just 7 to nothing to the 15th, 16th ranked team in the nation. 15th in the coaches poll, 16th in AP. This time the pass complete to Madden who just runs over Eric Hamilton and inside the 20-yard line. Before Greg Beaker brings him down. Eric Hamilton is a very good tackler, but I don't think he realized who caught the football. You'll see the hit. That's pretty good form, but Curtis Madden is 232 pounds. Unlike Eric Gallon, about 200, Madden just lowered the shoulder and ran right over the top of Eric Hamilton. That's the first time all year CU has given up a first down when the other team has third and nine or longer to go. First down from the Buffs 18. Another sack. And again by Leonard Renfro. Boy, Renfro just blew right past Eric Wolford. Renfro's been living in that Kansas State backfield. I think he has two and a half sacks on the day so far. And another long setup for Kansas State, second and 20. And during the first half, here's where K-State's been using the draw or the screen. They really spread out that CU offense with four receivers. This time, the receiver is Michael Smith, and he's inside the 20 again. Greg Beaker to tackle. Smith on just an underneath route. He knows his zone coverage, hooks up, catches the ball. Now you get as many yards as you can before those big guys get to you. Yeah, he is a little guy, 5'10", 160 pounds, but he's the second all-time pass catcher 
in Big 8 history. Back before the year started, the sports writers voted him the Offensive Player of the Year preseason. That's Smith again. Gets about another five yards out of it. The crowd, the crowd wants a penalty on what might be perceived as a late hit there. Well, this is a good job by Chris Hudson, number 47, who will make this play. If you miss this tackle, you're going to give up the first down and maybe a touchdown. Smith will try to juke him inside. Hudson doesn't have any part of it. He slows him down enough that Hayward can get there along with figures. And the Wildcats will have a decision. And they're going to take their time making that decision. They're taking a timeout right now, trying to decide whether or not to go, out, go for it on fourth down. The new 92 Honda Accord LX, value is standard equipment. Along with a driver's side airbag, air conditioning, power windows, power door locks, AM FM stereo cassette, cruise control, adjustable steering column, power antenna, dual power mirrors, and Michelin all-season radials. That leaves just one option left for you to decide. The color. The 92 Honda Accord LX, still the leader of the pack. Frontier Longmont, John Elway, Mile High, Classic, Empire, Fisher, Ralph Schomp. Imagine you're out camping, <clears throat> and then your food runs out on you, and then your water runs out on you, and then your wife runs out on you, and then the lightning starts, and then the rain starts, and then your car won't start, so then you pull out your cellular phone, and then you call mom, and she comes and takes you home, <clears throat> and then she gives you soup. Hello, ma. There are very few places in Denver where you can buy just about anything you could want. Downtown is one of those places. But what makes downtown truly different is that shopping here is a lot more than simply buying things. Downtown. Shopping with a little something extra. Seven to nothing, Colorado, but Kansas State is going to try and put its first points of the day on the board. Warren Klassen is the field goal kicker, a 32-yard attempt. And he misses. The second time today, Kansas State has missed a field goal from, clear, from fairly close in. But I tell you, that's just a killer, too. As you mentioned, that's the second time it's happened. This is a hook. And it'll hook through the uprights, but after it crossed the goal line. Klassen just left it out to the right. And Bill Snyder's got to be tearing his hair out. Followed through. A little body language. And then you hope. Kansas State has done a great job getting to the CU 25 and in all day long. But they've missed a 35-yard field goal. They've missed a 25, or a 30 Seven-yard field goal attempt, and they've been picked off twice, and now CU has the ball. And a gain of about 10 yards by Michael Westbrook. No, Westbrook is hurt. I think Lamont Warren had to carry. Westbrook tried to get a block right at the end of the play, and he stuck his head in on a defensive player and took the worst of it. Well, he's back up. Westbrook will come from the right side, right there. And it hits number 93, who is not on the K-State roster. Looks like he just got shaken up on the play. As they take him to the sideline, he's rolling his neck around. After that play, though, he will be on the roster next week. Lamont Warren with a nine-yard pickup on that play. Let me correct myself. It's Daryl. Harbert, who's a 250-pound defensive end. You don't want to hit those guys, Michael. Let those guys alone. The reverse. Charles Johnson. And a lot of purple jerseys after him. Johnson doing quite the escape act here. A flag on the field before he's pushed out of bounds. 
Well, it's going to be a clip on Colorado, I would think. Pretty nifty job of running by Charles Johnson that time. Well, when you're running all over the field like that. Clip on the wide. That's what usually happens. There's a clip somewhere. Now, Chris Patterson will come from the left side, number 34. He has got this thing sniffed out. Charles Johnson realizes there that he's going to be in trouble. Now, we'll stop and cut back to the other side. Lamont Warren passes up a clip right there. Does a nice job of pulling off Patterson, the nose guard. And Charles Johnson ran about 70 yards there. <laughs> Picked up two. Colorado has just not been able to get that surge up front and establish the line of scrimmage against Kansas State. And although I'm sure Bill McCartney realized his team might not be at the emotional peak of last week, he didn't anticipate this. Second and 21. Hagan almost picked off. Roderick Green saw the pass coming. It was intended for Robbie James, who still had his back turned to the play. But Darian Hagan's going to have people in his face well before he's ready to throw the football and let that thing go before Robbie James had turned around. Sean Dabney, the defensive tackle, applying the pressure. Well, here's good news for Buffs fans. Michael Westbrook back in the ballgame. Shaking up a little a couple of plays ago. Now back in. It's third and 21 for the Buffs from their own nine-yard line. They lead 7 to nothing. We're under two minutes to go in the first half. That's Scott Phillips, the fullback. And he gets it up to the 25-yard line, a gain of 16, but he's still short of the first down. And the Buffs are going to have to punt the ball. Phillips had such a nice game last week in Norman, Oklahoma. Nobody expected him to play as well as he did, but he not only ran the ball effectively, he did a nice job blocking and got involved in the passing game as well. Sophomore who went to Lewis Palmer High School in Monument, Colorado. That's Gerald Benton waiting for the punt, but he's going to have to wait a while because the Buffs right now are huddled on the sideline talking about exactly what they're going to do in this punting situation. 1.45 to go, first half. The Buffs lead at 7 to nothing. They came into Manhattan a 20-point favorite, but they're fighting for their lives right now. Well, Kansas State really has been impressive here in the first half. Been able to move the football. They have not punched it in. They've missed a couple of short field goal opportunities that would have really got them very much into the game. You don't want to be an equipment manager. Take a look at that stock. You got to carry all those things. Well, they come with two different sets of shoes when they play on artificial turf. Depending on how well their shoes hold the turf, they go with one or the other. Berger gets off a nice long kick. Benton bobbles it back at his own 22. Slips, gets up, and that might have been a mistake because four buffs bring him down at the 25. It was a 53-yard punt by Berger with a three-yard return. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of KCNC Channel 4 and the National Broadcasting Company, and it's intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or retransmission of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC Channel 4 is prohibited. Very nicely done. Thank you. I practice that once a week. <laughs> First and 10 from Kansas State. From its own 26. Almost picked off by Eric Hamilton. Pass broken up by number six, Eric Hamilton. Nice read and a good jump on the ball. The only thing Hamilton doesn't do right on this play is catch it. Watson trying to dump the ball to flat. Hamilton, the nickelback, sitting in the middle, doubling the receiver. And I don't think Watson ever saw it. This is what the CU defensive backs have been dreaming about all week. They've been talking about the possibility of picking the ball off because Watson throws it a lot. So far this year, at least coming into the game, five interceptions. Today, he's thrown two more. That time, batted down. Leonard Renfro. 
Boy, there's your early candidate for defensive player of the game. So it's third and ten. We're down to 125 to go in the half. Brings up third and ten, 26 yard line. And you're right, Dave, possibly the biggest crowd of the year here in Manhattan. Well over 30,000, yet it might be the quietest crowd of the year, despite the fact they're within a touchdown of the 15th ranked team in the country. That time, Kansas State runs the ball with better success than their passing game. Deion Figures, number two, makes the stop on Curtis Madden, number two. On the tackle, number two, Deion Figures. Colorado. Buffs take a timeout. They want the football back. They've been very, very successful in two-minute drills. You see a pretty good job. An interesting call, really, a draw play on third and ten. Madden able to pick up about eight and a half yards. But so far, the Colorado defense has done a nice job in containing Paul Watson. Keep in mind that last week against Nebraska in Lincoln, Watson was 26 of 46 for 340 yards. They moved up and down the field against a pretty fair defense. Be sure to tune in to KCNC Channel 4 and NBC tomorrow for the best in NFL football. At 11 a.m., the Bengals visit the House of Pain as they take on the powerful Oilers in the Astrodome. Then at 2 p.m., the Broncos travel to New England to take on the Patriots. It all starts tomorrow morning with Broncos beat Sunday at 10 a.m. and NFL Live at 10.30 on KCNC Channel 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. Kansas State will have to punt the ball. A minute 15 to go in the half. Chris Hudson will receive the Sean Snyder punt. Hudson so far on the year, a 24-yard return average. This time he calls for a fair catch at his own 33-yard line. We'll keep it here for the Buffs' final drive of the first half. Darian Hagan will come out to quarterback. That was a 33-yard punt by K-State. Hagan talking things over with offensive coordinator Gary Barnett. Dave, do you stay conservative here or do you go for it? Oh, no, you go for points. There are three of four this year in putting points on the board in a two-minute situation. You've got plenty of time, a minute and seven seconds, and you've got a guy who's been there before in Darian Hagan. And he's going to throw. Batted down, almost intercepted. Oh, we've seen a lot of that today. A lot of passes knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma will probably watch this film eventually and say, why couldn't they play like this against us in the first half? Good job that time by the linebacker, Joe Boone, getting into the passing lane and just got his right hand on the football. Hagan, not a very good day passing the ball so far. Four completions and 12 attempts. Second and ten. Again, to Robbie James complete, and he rolls out of bounds at the 42. Call it a gain of nine. They're going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Clock continues to run. You've got to get a play here to pick up the first down. You only have one timeout left. Get him back up and throw the ball down. Less than 40 seconds to go. The Buffs run it. Lamont Warren does pick up the first down, so it's new life for CU. You see Darian Hagan now clapping his hands, telling everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. You probably just want to take this ball and throw it in the ground. 34 seconds to go. And Kansas State calls a timeout. That's their last timeout. I believe they had the wrong defensive players on the field. They wanted to correct that. Yeah, they actually had 12 and still do. So they had the right ones on. They just had too many. <laughs> <laughs> the right ones in the wrong combination. And this really will work to the benefit of Colorado. Now, Hagan can come talk to Gary Barnett, the offensive coordinator, in the yellow and black shirt. Bill McCartney will want to put his two cents in there. Head coaches, even though they don't call the plays, when it gets down to crucial time, they want their two cents in. Sunday night, so your sports night here on KCNC Channel 4. Immediately following the News 4 Late Edition at 10.35, it's the Bill McCartney Show, featuring the coach himself, along with our own Dave Logan. They'll bring you all the highlights and analysis of today's game, along with a look ahead to next week's game against Nebraska. 
Then it's Sports Extra with Gary Miller, where you get a preview of Warren Miller's newest extreme skiing film, plus an interview with KBIG Radio's Don Martin and all the strange things he does to get all those hard-to-get sports personalities on his radio show. It all starts at 1035 this Sunday, following the News 4 Late Edition on KCNC Channel 4. I think earlier I said here on Channel 4. Of course, today we're doing the game on Channel 20. And it's also been announced this week that we'll be doing the game against Oklahoma State. See you against Oklahoma State on November 9th. That game will also be here on Channel 20, of course, with our crew from Channel 4. In the second quarter, Oklahoma 20, Kansas nothing. Oh, you hear a cheer from the crowd. You might have even heard the public address announcement. Oklahoma beating the arch rival of Kansas State, Kansas, 20 to nothing in the second quarter. And now you hear the crowd booing because the referee just asked the clock operator to put another five seconds on the clock, which means the Buffs have the ball and 39 seconds to go in the first half. Buffs with the ball at their own 45. No flags. Hagen complete. And Charles Johnson dips out of bounds inside the 45 of K-State. Nice throw that time by Darian Hagen. Johnson on the outcut. Hagen right on the money. Colorado needs about 12 more yards to be within range, at least comfortable range. Of Jim Harper. Harper's longest field goal of the year is 50 yards. The Buffs chewing up 9, 10 yards at a time and not very much time on the clock. Flags fly. They got Daryl Harper at that time. Kansas State almost jumped offsides last time. This time they got caught. Dead ball. Offside. On the defense, five yards. Well, there's five of that 12 yards you say the Buffs need to get in the field goal range. Mr. Herbert being talked to by an assistant coach, you can't jump offside. You're right in front of the ball. You've got to watch the ball and you can't jump. I didn't know you were such a good lip reader. Just nod your head, Daryl. First and five. The ball on the Kansas State 39. Hagan brought down for a loss. Back at the 42. Call it a loss of three. Call it a loss of time. Darryl, uh, Darian's got to get his club back up now and stop the clock 15 seconds and counting. They need to get off a play quickly. Can't do it much quicker than that. Hagan throws the ball into the ground, stops the clock. Nine seconds to go. And Hagen will come to the sideline to talk things over. Well, nine seconds is enough time to run a play. You still have one timeout left. So it doesn't matter as to where you catch the football. Hagen will instruct the official, out. I'm going to be calling timeout as soon as the play is dead here. You run a play to get it into field goal range, or do you throw it into the end zone? Hope for six. No, you run a play to get it into field goal range. Hagan with a lot of time, complete to Charles Johnson. Yes, they are calling it complete. Down to the 25-yard line. Charles Johnson. Flag on the play. Heck of a catch. Johnson going to the ground to scoop it. But a penalty against the Buffs. Well, they called holding. On Colorado, this is a pretty good throw by Darian Hagan and a nice sketch by Charles Johnson, but it will come back. And now you probably do air it out to the end zone. Third down. Yeah, it's going to come back to the original line of scrimmage, which was the 45-yard line, CU's 45-yard line. Thank you, third and 21, 45-yard line. 
Third and 21. And CU lets the clock run out. That's the end of the first half. Kansas State giving CU a fight. It's CU 7. Wildcats nothing. In front of a hepped up crowd at Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas. For good reason. CU looking for its third straight Big 8 title. They don't want Kansas State to get in the way, not with Nebraska coming up next week. The two teams head for the locker room. The fans head for the concession stand. The marching band heads for the field. Good parents give their children two things. One is roots, and the other And we're going to head for a commercial. We'll be right back. cheap. So what motor oil goes in this race car? The same straight off the shelf Pennzoil quality that goes in your car. You know the one. Pennzoil. Ever since America learned to drive. can be seriously affected due to an injury. If you've been injured due to the fault of another, call Goykachia Law Offices. We talk your language. We're slashing prices on over $7 million of truck inventory at the Chesron Automotive Group. How about a new Nissan truck? Just $59.99 at Marshall Nissan of Boulder. Marshall Ford of Boulder has a four-door Ford Explorer, just $15,999. A tough diesel Cummins 4x4 truck, just $15,999 at Southwest Dodge. And Chesron Chevrolet has a new Chevy truck, just $59.99. Plus, every truck has 5.9% financing available. Take the pick. Every Chesron dealership has slashed their prices to the bone. Guaranteed. Halftime in Manhattan, Kansas. You see the score. CU leading the Wildcats of Kansas State. 7 0. Dave, a lot of people will be surprised at this halftime score. Is CU exploding on itself or is Kansas State that much better than it has been in the past? Well, I think you, you have to give credit to Kansas State for being a better football team. Uh, but Colorado, obviously, as we talked about at the top of the telecast, is not playing with any emotion. Kansas State is a very fired up team and the longer they stay in this game, the better they will continue to play because they realize, hey, we've got a chance to win an extremely important football game. So Colorado, emotionally very flat, and yet not able to even sustain any kind of execution that I think they should be because they're a better football team than Kansas State. This was a great worry of the CU coaching staff. Is your team going to come in emotionally down considering the game last week against Oklahoma? Very emotional win, and then Nebraska coming up next week. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll come back, give you some first-half stats and some first-half highlights. CU leads it 7-0. A change is coming, so the stood happening all over my neighborhood. Only one place got the taste for me. Call the change to Pizza Hut Delivery. Call Pizza Hut Delivery for the new Meat Lovers Pizza with 25% more meat toppings than before. Get one medium for $8.99 and a second for just four bucks more. Call the change to Pizza Hut Delivery. Pizza Hut Delivery, make it great. Your Dodge dealer has a special factory shipment of Dakota 4x4 club cabs in stock now. With our powerful new Magnum V8, these trucks have more power, more towing, and more payload than any Ford, Chevy, or import compact 4x4 club cab. But hurry, 
With 750 cash back, our selection of Dakota Club cabs won't last long. See your local Dodge dealer today. Rediscover American value. I was on the way to my next appointment when I made an unscheduled stop. Since I still needed to get some figures, I called the office. Busy signal. I try again. Still busy. So I give it another try. This time, no busy signal. No, this time I get a fax tone. So I wait a couple minutes. Cool down. Finally, I get through and ask for Dave. Rebecca, Dave's not here, but he's due back any second. I'll have him call you there. So I wait. And wait. By making sure you have all the phone lines you need, a separate line for your fax, and U.S. West business voice messaging, every call will get through. If I can't get through to my business, how are my clients supposed to? U.S. West Communications, making the most of your time. Manhattan, Kansas, the CU Buffs lead Kansas State Wildcats 7-0. Let's go down to the field and our Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Les. We didn't get a chance to talk to Bill McCartney directly as he went off the field, but I did overhear him talking to the officials. He's not real thrilled with some of the calls in the first half. He feels his defensive linemen are being held by the K-State offensive linemen, but there hadn't been any offensive holding calls yet. But on the other hand, CU's marching down the field right before halftime, and the Buffs got an offensive holding call against them. So Mac was kind of putting a, a bug in the officials' ear to make sure that uh, things are seen the same on both sides of the ball. And obviously, Bill McCarty not at all thrilled with the performance of his ball club here at halftime. All right, on to other things. You know, college football has become very specialized in the past few years. The CU Buffs have a team psychologist. They now also have a team massage therapist. His name is Royce Weaver. If you can keep the muscle loose and relaxed, it just, you have just, actually you have a healthier muscle. And see your massage therapist, Royce Weaver knows healthy muscles mean healthy players. Now that I've, I've gotten them, I can really tell the difference from high school and junior college because in high school, the pain that I got in, in the, during the week before the game, I felt during game day. Smith is blessed with great speed. He gets two massages a week to keep his legs fresh. And Weaver's work, which forces fresh blood into the wide receiver's leg muscles, is a big reason number 86 has been relatively injury-free the past two seasons. It's like weight training. You have to have weight training for football. Mm -hmm. And right now, massages, are just, they have, my muscles have to have them. The way the 54-year-old goes about his business, you'd never know he's legally blind. Weaver can't see straight ahead, instead relying on his peripheral vision to see. Royce adds a dimension of hands-on care that is really absent in a lot of medical care these days. Uh, we put an ultrasound machine on them, or we put a muscle stem machine on them, or we hook them up to a machine to do this, that, or the other thing, and Royce is all human touch, and I don't think you can underestimate the power of that. This is Weaver's fifth year with the CU athletic program. At first, some players hesitated at getting a rub down. That doesn't fit the macho football image. That all changed a few years ago after Weaver helped two well-known running backs overcome nagging leg injuries. I started out working on, uh, like, eight, uh, J.J. Flanagan and Eric the Enemy, and, and those guys were kind of role models for the other players anyway, and so that made it a lot easier. We wanted one last comment from Smith, but Rico had fallen asleep. Proof positive that Weaver's massages are not only rewarding, but very relaxing for the Buffs. You know, we had a lot of fun talking to Royce Weaver, but we feel somewhat bad about that piece. We did it about two weeks ago, and since then, Rico Smith has missed two of the last three games. So, Rico, I know you're back home watching the ball game. We didn't mean to jinx you. Get healthy and get back out on the field. Back up to you, Les. All right, thanks, Mark. And as the K-State marching band plays, we're going to take another break. Seven to nothing. See you at the half. Another Meineke profile of the smart and thrifty. They're not celebrities, they're not millionaires, but they know how to live. How can they afford all this fun in the sun? Did Dad make a killing in the stock market? Did Mum clean up on the garage sale? No, they saved and shopped wisely. I didn't pay a lot for new brakes at Meineke. 
come to Meineke Discount Mufflers, the muffler and brake specialist, where you'll get more life out of your car and more miles for your dollar. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot for new brakes. <laughs> Oktoberfest at your Jeep and Eagle dealers. Yes, you could don an attractive short outfit, but we think you'd look better in a new Eagle talent at this great price. Or a new Jeep Cherokee with cash back and Olympic discounts. You could buy this, but it's easier to fit your family into this. A new Summit Wagon with air conditioning at no extra charge. Don't miss the Jeep and Eagle Oktoberfest, where you'll say, skip the Wiener Schnitzel, Hilda. I want a new car. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. Speed is a God-given thing. The way to say thank you is to push it to the limit. I'm used to guys being bigger and stronger. So I work at being quicker and faster. For the NBA, I look like a little guy. But I know this. You can't beat what you can't catch. Halftime in Manhattan. You know, the Boulder campus of the University of Colorado is understandably proud of its national champion football team. The primary mission of any university, however, is education, a process that usually begins with the teacher. CU's Leslie Aholm introduces us to some of CU's brightest faculty stars. So you need to fill that out, bubble it in. Welcome to Mike Grant's general biology class. These students are getting ready to take a quiz. Even though Professor Grant has help passing out the paperwork, he works the crowd like a pro. What I'm trying to achieve in the classroom is communication. I want to connect with the students and have them connect with me and with the material. But communication can be tough in a class of more than 400 students. So Professor Grant offers an additional informal class once a week. I try to make it as interactive as we can to make the students participate. I do ask them questions and have them answered. I get them a chance to ask me questions. And so I go be, uh, beyond the just formal lecture presentation of information today. Professor Grant says large classes aren't ideal, but he believes they offer students more exposure to top faculty and researchers. A special program at CU is helping teachers make large lecture classes a positive experience for students. There are definite skills and techniques uh, that need to be learned, and that's why uh, here on the Boulder campus we have had in place for a number of years now a very active a teaching excellence program that brings in graduate students, brings in teachers that we've already hired, brings in veteran teachers, and gives them uh, this kind of training and review. Students play an incredible role in the entire process. The focus really of the teaching excellence program is on improving one's teaching so that learning is improved. Uh, implied morality. Student and faculty satisfaction are the cornerstones of CU's Teaching Excellence Program. The teaching profession is a very generous profession. And, uh, a lot is, is expected of you, but at the same time, the, the returns are enormous. Look at the moral complexity that you have here. Jim Palmer's humanities class for freshmen and sophomores is all about observation, thinking, and discussion. There is conversing and narrating, storytelling, uh, analyzing, questioning, uh, hinting and suggesting. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, subtleties, I think, to, to teaching. Teachers like Jim Palmer and Mike Grant are just two examples of teaching excellence in action. They share a feeling of excitement about the classroom. Uh, it's an invitation to learning. It's a space uh, that is used as a a kind of unrehearsed adventure every time you walk into a classroom. It gives me an awful lot of pleasure. After 18 years now, I'm more and more positive that I made the right choice a long time ago. Teaching is an exciting business, and it's the lifeblood of, of this campus. We'll return for more halftime activities from Manhattan after these words and a message from the University of Colorado. 
If you added up all the potato chips you've eaten during poker nights and playoff games, you'd end up with some serious fuds. But you still wouldn't have a taste as big as these little Gino's pizza rolls. Ooh, a tremendous taste of zesty pizza and a hot little bite-sized snack. A taste so big, it makes ordinary chips seem like small potatoes. Gino's pizza rolls, the pizza way to snack. You got your dreams, your big ideas, you want them all to come true. But can you depend on your bank to really help you through? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You give you all and all that you do. But can you depend on your bank to do the same for you? Yes, you can. Cutters, we know the right turn can do more than change your look. It can also change the way you feel. Our highly skilled stylist will give you the perm that's just right for you. And right now, at just $24.95, the right perm will give you change you never expected. Cost Cutters. We're your style! Today's game is brought to you by McDonald's, Athletic Club, Inverness and Monaco, Pontiac, and U.S. West. Colorado's a great place to live and study. Hey, let's hit the Mesa Trail. A lot of us like to go run in the mountains real early in the morning. I think the University of Colorado is committed to the students. I like the fact that the teachers are real easy to get a hold of, and they're so willing to help. I wouldn't be here if it couldn't have an impact on my undergraduates. We have an excellent group of teachers here. They have so much energy and, and want to pass that on to their students. I think it's really important that the university recognizes the quality of life here. Things like smaller classes, easy access to the professors. You know, I've always felt that the professors are there for me. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it is at the University of Colorado. All right. Back in Manhattan, Kansas, we're near the end of halftime. About three minutes to go before we kick it off here. CU Buffs are back on the field. The officials waiting at midfield. And let's go down to the field right now and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much. Les had a chance to talk to some of the CU offensive coaches before they headed back up to the press box. And I asked him if K-State was doing anything differently defensively. And they said they are surprised. They're doing a lot of shifting along the front seven. They're, they're throwing some stunts in there that have kind of surprised the Buffs. And they hope to make some adjustments at halftime and get the offense on track. As you guys know, obviously, they've sputtered in the first half. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. We're going to take a look at some first half highlights now. It, it was a, a half where Kansas State moved the ball pretty well, but every time they got close, CU came up with a big play. Well, K-State had some success early. Eric Gallon did a pretty good job here, 22 yards on the gain. And although if you look statistically, Colorado can't be too unhappy with what Kansas State did. 20 rushes for 70 yards. You can win with numbers like that. But Paul Watson had his moments. He threw a couple of interceptions. But Kansas State did just enough offensively, I think, to keep CU back on their heels. Short passes, a couple of runs here or there. Colorado offensively, on the other hand, with the only score of the day, Lamont Warren cuts back the ISO lead and gets into the end zone. Wildcats missed a couple of golden scoring opportunities. But it's been a game that CU defensively has been able to control because they've made plays when they've had to. Greg Beaker there with an interception. And the Buffs with a 7-0 halftime lead. Four times Kansas State has gotten inside the CU 25-yard line. The Wildcats have missed two field goals and have been intercepted twice. In close, Kansas State takes the field. This is the kind of game that if Colorado can manage to win somehow, 
is perfect psychologically speaking because Bill McCartney then, of course, with Nebraska next week, will have every advantage going his way. Well, we didn't play well. Uh, the kids will know they didn't play well. The one drawback here is if you stay close enough, Kansas State feels like they can make enough plays to win the game, and then all the psychological warfare goes right out the window if you lose. Now, Bill McCartney is always looking for a way to motivate his kids from week to week. Last week, it was the T-shirts that said, pass the torch, or I receive the torch. And next week, going into Nebraska, maybe McCartney can use this game as motivation. Hey, we went against a Kansas State team we should have beaten and beaten soundly. Instead, they gave us a fight. It means our heads were not in the game mentally, emotionally. Let's get it up for the Cornhuskers. Well, they won't have any trouble getting up for the Cornhuskers. They do it every year, but if Bill McCartney had the capabilities, I'm sure at halftime he would have gathered some more T-shirts that said, let's keep that torch lit. Well, the Buffs are going to kick off the second half to start the second half. Kansas State will receive it. And back to receive it will be William Price and Andre Coleman. There's Price. And kicking off for the Buffs, Mitch Berger. Andre Coleman will run it out, but only to about the 18-yard line. A return of 18 yards for Andre Coleman. And Paul Watson will start the second half as the Kansas State quarterback. Had a pretty good first half, yardage-wise at least, 135, but through those two key interceptions, picked off by Chris Hudson and Greg Beaker. Watson, a senior out of Kansas City. A couple of weeks ago, the Big 8 Player of the Week against arch-rival Kansas. He's a 61% passer. Eric Gallen gets a couple of yards. Marcellus Elder and Joel Steed, the buddies up on the defensive line, make the stop. Second and eight for the Buffs. Turning out to be a pretty nice day here in Manhattan. The cloud cover pretty much gone, warmed up a little. Watson taking his time at the line of scrimmage. With a man grabbing onto his ankles, he gets rid of the pass and it's almost picked off. Ronnie Bradford got a hand on it before it fell to the ground. And, and Leonard Renfro, number 99, will have his hands around Paul Watson's ankles. In this case, Watson might have been better served just to go down with the sack because this could have been a huge play for Colorado had Bradford been able to hang on. Buffs have picked off two passes. I'll bet they've had a chance at another four right through their hands. Third and eight for K-State. Three wide receivers in the game. Watson reaches out to the 29. That ball is going to be called dead before he fumbled. The ground caused the fumble. Greg Beekert made the tackle. But Watson did scramble for first down yardage. Paul Watson at over 200 pounds makes a good choice here and unlike NFL quarterbacks who usually slide feet first this is called going for the first down yardage the ground caused the fumble there and Watson with that last effort gives his club a new series runs the ball pretty well doesn't he he's a big strong kid and we talked with a couple of the coaches before the game they were concerned about his mobility his ability to make people miss and buy himself some more time on first down Eric Gallon with a nice hole Across the 35 to about the 36. Call it a gain of seven before Beekert makes the tackle. Eric Gallon is right now third 
on the Big 8 rushing list. He's got good ability to make quick decisions. Right there, the lead to the right side, he cuts back and finds a soft seam in the defensive line. He's had a long way to travel into the first string unit at tailback. Came here as a wide receiver, switched to fullback, set out last year with a back injury. And now the starting tailback for Kansas State. It's second and four. The pitch goes to the fullback, Madden. A quick pitch, catches CU by surprise, and Madden picks up another first down. Ronnie Wolfork wrestles him down. And this Kansas State crowd starting to get fired up. At the request of of Madden, who turned to his crowd and said, hey, let's, let's hear it. The quick pitch. Wildcats able to outflank quickly the CU defense. Wolfork reacts and makes the tackle, but Curtis Madden with a pretty good run there. From Denison, Texas, my mother's hometown. Really? Yeah. Have you been there? Certainly. Nice. Lovely. First and 10 for K-State from their own 43. Maybe a gain of one yard for Vili Sant, his first carry of the day. Vili, V-I-L-I, Sant, S-A-N-F-T. Try saying that five times fast. No, don't. I know you were about to. You'll never get me on that one. Sant gains one yard on that play. Boy, I hope he doesn't carry a lot because that's an awfully hard name to say. Let's just call him V.S. Okay. Watson gets rid of the ball. He heard the footsteps of Chad Brown. We're going to get a holding call against Kansas State, so nothing goes right for the Wildcats that play. So Kansas State has pushed back a little further. Certainly doesn't look like the offense that outgains CU in the first half. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Well, Bill McCartney finally got that holding call he's been looking for. They're also asking for intentional grounding. They feel Paul Watson just tried to throw that ball away to avoid the sack, but I don't think McCartney's going to get that call, but he holding. did get the Eight offensive yards. holding call. On Back up to you guys. Well, I don't think Bill will be too much of a pig. He'll take this 15-yard penalty. Pushes K-State back to the 22. So it'll be second down and a long 31 yards to go. Screen or draw time. If you're a defensive player, those are the two tight plays you have to look for here. You're right on the draw. It's Sant trying to get outside. Finally wrestled down by Julian Hayward. And a face mask, too, so that's going to add to the play. That's when you know you're not mentally in the game, when really it doesn't take a lot to listen to the call. Inadvertent face mask, five yards. Second and 31 against a team that likes to throw. You've got to figure that you're going to get the screen of the draw. And V.S. gets to the outside and gains way too many yards if you're a Colorado Buffalo fan. Not good job of reacting and or anticipating the call. And Tech on another five yards. CU called for a face mask. So Kansas State with the ball on its own 37. In this situation, a lot more palatable. It's second and 15 for the Wildcats. Once again, three wide receivers lined up. You see Watson at the line. He is checking and calling plays based on what Colorado shows him. So you'll see the defense move around a lot and try to give him different looks. And he used too much time. Flags flying everywhere. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards. Well, somebody on K-State jumped a little too soon. So now it's second and 21. 
Watson with the snap. You see number 75, the right guard. That is Toby Lawrence, who did move. Wildcats with the ball on their own 32. And a long way to go for a first down, 21 yards. Watson. Corralled by Chad Brown once again. And Leonard Renfro. Well, Chad Brown comes around the horn and runs right by the offensive tackle. You'll see Paul Watson, who's looking to his right, never sees Chad Brown. And from the backside, the linebacker gets there before Watson can deliver. Doug Groosh, the offensive tackle, trying to block Brown, didn't move his feet very quickly, and Chad was by him. And on to the quarterback. See you with six sacks on the day so far. Chad Brown has a couple of them. Third and 29. Kansas State going backwards. Setting up for the screen. But it really wasn't there. The pass intended for Sant. Incomplete. So Kansas State will be punting the ball for the first time this half. And back to do that is Sean Snyder. Chris Hudson will receive the punt for CU. We haven't seen Hagen back to feel the punt yet. And Chris Hudson all day long. A low kick by Snyder, not a very good one. Hudson at his own 38. Down, up, and down again at the 41-yard line. A punt of 39 yards, a return of four for Chris Hudson. And Darian Hagan talking things over with Gary Barnett, his offensive coordinator. Hagan on the day. Six completions and 15 attempts. I'll be very surprised if Colorado does not go back to a basic-type attack here, smash-mouth football. They threw the ball quite a bit in the first half, and... I think it's time to line up and let that offensive line go to work and try to get that running game going. Well, they showed option there. Hagan holds on across midfield. Inside Kansas State territory and finally run out. At about the K-State 36-37. Hagan on the reverse spin option. You can see a good block inside. James Hill, Westbrook. And Hagan stretches that defense. Mendez, that's the free safety we talked about in the first half. He, on the option plays, is geared to Darian Hagan. That time took a bad angle, and Hagan was able to beat him to the corner. 10.02 to go, third quarter. The Buffs with a 7-0 lead. That's how they went in the halftime. Looking downfield, going deep. Westbrook overthrown. I'll bet he's thrown to Westbrook 10 times today. Well, the game is, is certainly not out of reach if you're a Kansas State fan, but you get the impression that some of this play calling is designed to affect Nebraska next week, maybe more than Kansas State this week. They try to get Westbrook to the post. The free safety trying to play the option is out of the middle, and the ball just overthrown. Second and 10 for CU at the Kansas State 38-yard line. Hagan will keep it again. Gets a yard. Chris Patterson along with Brooks Barta make the tackle that time. Brooks Barta waving his hands to the K-State crowd to get up on their feet. See you with third and nine. This time complete to Westbrook for a first down and more inside the 20. Finally dragged down by a host of purple jerseys. Well, I'll tell you, Les, give Westbrook and Hagen a lot of credit here, but the guy who makes this play possible, and I don't know if we have a shot or not, is Lamont Warren, the tailback. Warren did a good job picking up the blitz this well after the block, but Westbrook watched the ability to run with the football. He is not an easy guy to tackle. And when you play him man-to-man, -man, you really take a risk of missing a tackle and giving up a huge play. 
So a first down for the Buffs at the K-State 16-yard line. Hagan keeping it again. Crushed at the 15 and out of bounds. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntyre. Thank you, Les. After that big hit on Lamont Warren a couple of plays ago, he's got a stinger. As you can see, he just ran back in the ball game. Nothing serious. Just kind of got racked up a little bit. But he's back in the lineup. Back up to you guys. See you with a second and nine situation. Trying to add to that seven and nothing lead. This is Warren. Stopped at the 11, gain of four. Jamie Mendez stopped it. Well, Mendez has been active. Called upon to play the option of the quarterback. That time when you run the lead, he sits right in the middle of the field. Very good tackler for the Wildcats. Uh, he played on a high school team in Youngstown, Ohio, that threw eight shutouts his senior year. He was a big part of that. Third and five for the Buffs. Hagan again, trying to do it himself. He'll be close to the first down. I think it's marked a little short, however. Well, there's a case of a senior quarterback, instead of stretching the defense, knowing how many yards he needs and ducking it up and trying to pick it up. Fourth down, and Colorado will go for it. This is a smart move? Oh, I think you have to. I think you have to try to establish yourself in this game. 7 nothing won't cut it. And if you don't get it, you've got Kansas State pinned back deep in its own territory. Hagan trying to draw Kansas State off sides, but it might have backfired. I think they're going to get Colorado from moving the left side of the offensive line. It looked like K-State jumped initially, but the ball wasn't snapped. Ball procedure on the offense. So that must have been the strategy. Try and draw Kansas State offside to get the easy first down, and if you can't do it, you can bring the field goal unit out, and that's exactly what the Buffs are doing right now. I'll tell you what, Les, I really think they were going to run a play, but with the snap count, the offensive left side of the line just jumped, moved a little bit, and thus you've got to get three points. This is a 29-yard field goal attempt by Jim Harper. He is four for seven on the year. Make it five for eight, Jim Harper with another three points for CU. So the Buffs take a 10 to nothing lead with 7.14 to go in the third quarter. And we'll be right back in Manhattan, Kansas. You can count on McDonald's for something good to eat. For just 59, the steel can't be beat. We're serving breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack time too. From now on. all-new Pontiac Bonneville. A new way to ride. More than a work of art, an engineering masterpiece. With the stability of four-wheel independent suspension and the accuracy of anti-lock brakes. The art of excitement, the science of control. The all-new Pontiac Bonneville. Get on the Pontiac! See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer. <laughs> Well, a little more breathing room for these guys, the CU Buffs. Jim Harper just converted a field goal to give the Buffs a 10 to nothing lead. Five, Gary five, Barnett talking with his Buffs right now, the offensive unit. 
saying, okay, you did a pretty good job that time. Next time we got to get it into the end zone. Right now, the Buffs kicking off. A squiver from Berger. And that ball goes out of bounds. Berger not happy with himself. The Buffs will be penalized for that. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. And Kansas State will take the ball at its own 35. Here's that last scoring drive. It went eight plays, 46 yards. The Buffs stayed up almost three minutes, culminating in the Harper field goal. 10 to nothing, CU. We've got 7.14 to go in the third quarter. Paul Watson coming off the best game of his career last week against Nebraska. He threw for 340 yards. And he'll throw now. Leonard Renfro. Give Leonard credit for an, yet another sack. He had two sacks coming into today's game. I think he's got three or three and a half today already. Well, there are a few big guys that can run like Leonard Renfro. And that time after Chad Brown got knocked down, got back up and chased Watson, Renfro was able to grab him before he went out of bounds. In the second half, you've seen excellent pressure by the CU defense. They've been able to really get after Watson, not allow him to stand in the pocket. And if you're Bill Snyder, you're probably going to have to try to run the ball a little bit to take some of that pass rush away. Second and 16, the pitch to Gallon. And he gets nothing. Back, I think they lose another couple of yards. I would think that based on what we've seen, Colorado got a rather stern talking to in the locker room at halftime because it's been a totally different in terms of excitement, enthusiasm, and just getting after it, Colorado team. Eric Hamilton made the tackle on that last play. Another loss, this time three yards. So it's third and 19 for Kansas State. Both time the, the Wildcats have had the ball this half, they've gone backwards. And another good rush by Renfro and Elder. Watson goes out of bounds before he's brought down. And K-State will be punting again. You're right, Dave. CU's turned it up a notch on defense. And they've done it with a good pass rush. But also give credit to the secondary. That time, a zone coverage. And Watson never really has a chance to set and let the play develop. <laughs> and you've got some big people chasing you that are quite anxious to get to you. Sean Snyder will punt. And Chris Hudson will return it for the Buffs. The snap bounces in. And Snyder gets off a beauty. Hudson tries to field it, gets it on the first bounce. Makes a nice recovery up to his own 24-yard line. A 65-yard punt. And after the drop, Hudson returns it 11 yards. We'll take a break. An answering machine can answer one call at a time when you can't. On the other hand, U.S. West Business Voice Messaging can answer multiple calls at the same time. That alone should convince any business person to choose U.S. West. But if some of you still aren't convinced, there are a few other advantages. U.S. West, making the most of your time. Get on, get on, get on. Get on, excitement. The all-new Pontiac Bonneville. The new way to ride. More than a work of art, an engineering masterpiece. With the stability of four-wheel independent suspension and the accuracy of anti-lock brakes. The art of excitement, the science of control. The all-new Pontiac Bonneville. Get on the Pontiac! See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer.
Well, you know, Dave, uh, surprising the atmosphere here today, a K-State program that's been down for so long, and there is absolutely no electricity in the air as CU and Darian Hagan look to pass. Incomplete. Back to the crowd now. I if you watch TV and listen to the radio and read the newspapers here, you would think that this town was really psyched up for this game, going against the highly ranked CU Buffaloes, a rejuvenated K-State program, but this crowd is very, very quiet today, despite the fact they're down just 10 to nothing. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Yeah, Les, following up on what you're talking about, this week Bill Snyder was saying in the papers that, you know, they're expecting about 30,000. He said it was 16th ranked Colorado, and here we ought to sell it out, but that wasn't the case. Back up to you. They do have a fairly good crowd here, about 35,000. Hagen complete to Westbrook on the screen. Despite the fact he has no blocking, he gets it across the 35 to about the 38. And a first down for the Buffs. By, excuse me. Go ahead. I was just going to say, that that's the same play that Michael Westbrook fumbled in the first half. It's a screen pass as Westbrook from the outside will slip underneath the offensive line. You see a good job of execution. Hagen barely got it away. But then you've got one of your best athletes into the secondary with the football. The offensive line will block one count, two count, and then slide to the right. And Hagen does a nice job of getting rid of that one before Sean Dabney gets him. And a Wildcat injured on the play. That's Brent Venables, one of the linebackers. The pitch to Lamont Warren. He runs into a wall of purple. And a flag is down. Brooks Barta and Joe Boone, the starting linebackers, bring down Warren. On the end of the run, repeat first down. It's called an inadvertent face mask. You see Brooks Barta right there with his left hand that he realizes, oops, gotta get that off there. But they usually can see it. So Warren gets a couple yards and tack on another five for the face mask. We've seen a lot of those inadvertent face mask calls. You know, if you have enough of them, you start to wonder if they're really inadvertent. If you have enough of them, you've got a big headache. First down and three yards to go. Almost picked off. The man who got his hands on the ball was the left defensive end, Elijah Alexander. Hagan threw it as if they were on the same team. Boy, this thing changes dramatically if Alexander can hang on to this one. Hagan, again, never saw him running from inside out. He runs underneath the receiver on the outside, and Darian Hagan never saw him. Alexander had him hit it, had him hit it right in the hands. That's a bad spot for a linebacker. Boy, I tell you, that's a big play missed. Second and three for CU. Hagan keeps on the option. Some nice moves and gets it into K-State territory inside the 45. Watch Jim Hansen, the left tackle here. Hagan will run the option and then bend it back to the weak side. Hansen will come from the right side, number 77. Darian saying, Jim, look out. Hagan put a pretty good move on his offensive tackle. Picked up first down yardage. He runs like a water bug once he breaks the line of scrimmage. Averaging five yards of carry today. So a first down for CU. And they are at the Wildcats 42-yard line. James Hill stays on his feet inside the 40, down to the 37. Joe Boone there to bring him down. Colorado with a little bit of different look that time. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. Smash mouth football. And now Sean Embry comes out, Charles Johnson back in. You want to give future opponents as many looks as you possibly can. So they've got to prepare for all of them. Second and five. Lamont Warren. First down and more inside the 30. So the Buffs starting to pick it up defensively and now offensively. Well, for the first time this afternoon, you're starting to see the Colorado offense establish a little bit of rhythm. Good job by Craig Anderson. They run the counter tray. He and Ivy lead Lamont Warren around the right side. And they're starting to generate some yards. Maybe this is what they should have been doing all day, running right at them. It's certainly working in this series. 
at the Kansas State 27. CU with a first down. Warren again. And again, some room inside the 20. Down to the 18. Brooks Bart of the tackle. Call it a gain of nine for Lamont Warren. So the Buffs have a second and one. Lamont Warren out of Englewood, California. Averaging 5.8 yards a carry. Coming in, doing a little, little better than that today. Warren again. This time, no room. But he gets the first down. On the stop. Tony Williams, the tackle. You can see the push up front. Ivy and Lundberg double and then slide off. Warren has enough yardage for the first down. He's got 74 yards rushing on the day so far. First down at the K-State 15. Warren again. And Tony Williams the tackle again. Big fellow may have hurt himself there, but Tony Williams, 6'4 and 297 pounds. Didn't have to run far to get Lamont Warren. With Tony Williams kneeling on the sideline after that last tackle. Second and eight for the Buffs. Hagan made the smart move there. Even though he was tackled for a loss, he was thinking about pitching it. That would have been dangerous. The Quincy Griffith throws Hagan down at the 20-yard line. Kansas State gambles here, and you're right, Les. Hagan does make a smart move. He thinks about it right there. And I think Patterson may have grabbed Darian Hagan's face mask with his right hand. Kansas State gambling, blitzing people. They realize that they've got to try to do something to blow up the running game of the Buffs, and on that particular play, it worked. Once again, the purple crowd on its feet. Third and 15. James Hill up the middle. Stopped well short of the first down. And Jim Harper will come in the ballgame for CU for a field goal attempt. Kansas State blitzing from the outside on the play to blow up the option. Colorado tries to sneak the fullback through it. That usually will get you pretty good yardage, but third and 13, tough to pick up with the fullback. This is a 32-yard field goal attempt for Harper. He's hit one field goal already on the day. Blocked. Robbie James, the holder, falls on it. Kansas State trying to turn around the momentum with a blocked field goal. So the score remains the same. It's CU 10, Kansas State nothing. Here it is. Well, the snap was fine. Tough to see from that angle. Matter of fact, impossible to see where the pressure came from. The kick was blocked in the middle. There you go. The kick by Jim Harper. The good snap. And way in the air, Roderick Green with the block. Kansas State takes over at the 27-yard line. That's Eric Gallon. Maybe one yard on the carry. David, looked like the kick was low. I saw a purple jersey jump up behind the line and the ball hit him in the chest. Second and nine for K-State. Down 10 to nothing. We've got 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Good rush put on Watson. He escapes somehow and ends up gaining three yards on the play. 
Greg Thomas ran him out. The bus will look at this one tomorrow. Matter of fact, here is the kick before we look at the replay. I don't know if that's a low kick or just a good push up the middle and a pretty good jump by Roderick Green. But Kansas State comes up with a big play. I was going to say, they'll look at the last play and wonder how Paul Watson ever escaped what looked to be a sure sack. Third and six. Six seconds to go in the quarter. Watson going deep. Intended receiver was Gerald Benton, but the throw was out of bounds. And that's the end of the third quarter in Manhattan, Kansas. CU holding on to a tenuous 10 to nothing lead. Get on, get on, get on, get on excitement. It's the all new Pontiac Bonneville. A new way to ride. More than a work of art, an engineering masterpiece. With the stability of four wheel independent suspension and the accuracy of anti lock brakes. The art of excitement, the science of control. The all new Pontiac Bonneville. Get on your Pontiac! See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer. We need a break. We need a break. A McDonald's break. Yeah, a Big Mac. Fries. Yeah, large fries. An ice cold medium Coke classic. Oh, give me a break. Everything, all of it, right now, just two ninety nine. Two ninety nine for all that? Are we getting a break? Yeah. A Big Mac sandwich, large fries, and a medium Coke, all for just two ninety nine. That's incredible. Nah, that's just one of the great value meals at McDonald's today. I'm a Denver firefighter with the Denver Fire Department. I got my Chevy truck in uh, July. It looks good, it rides good, uh, it has more power than you need, and the gas mileage is fantastic. Uh, a friend of mine bought a, a Ford truck the same time I bought the Chevy truck. We traveled together on the highways. We stopped for gas together, and I always got better gas mileage. And he'd, oh, he would get mad, he'd say, well, you got me again. There isn't a, a single thing that I don't like about the Chevy. It's fantastic. Michael Westbrook conversing with the coaches up in the press box, trying to figure out how they can better penetrate this Kansas State defense. And Kansas State quarterback Paul Watson on the sideline talking with his head coach Bill Snyder. Snyder is not just a head coach, he also coordinates the passing game. That's his forte. For 10 years, he was the offensive coordinator at the University of Iowa under Hayden Fry. And among others, Snyder helped develop quarterbacks Chuck Long, Mark Vlasic, and Chuck Hartley, who all played in the NFL. Right now, Kansas State stymied and has to punt the ball. Almost blocked. In fact, somebody might have gotten a hand on it because it was a fairly short punt. I don't think Finally so. out of bounds. You're going to have running into the kicker, 28 yards of the punt. Got running into the kicker. Five yards. You can take a look. Colorado got a very good jump on the ball, and there are a number of white jerseys there. The question was he blocked into the punter. Tough to see from that angle as to who it was. But in college football, unlike professional football, this will not result in a first down. Ironically, the CU player was laid out flat, and the punter, Sean Snyder, came down on him and tripped. He really didn't hit the punter. Bill McCartney not too happy about that call. If it's roughing the punter, that would be a 15-yard penalty, and of course... Running into the kicker, five yards, repeat, fourth down. Roughing the kicker would be 15 yards and a first down in this case but running into the kicker is only five yards. So Chris Hudson will go back and try it again. The return man for Colorado. Sean Snyder set up back at his own 22 to punt the ball. And it's a fake. This is Curtis Madden, one man to beat is Hudson. 
Hudson rides him out, but K-State, with some tomfoolery, picks up a first down and is in CU territory. Well, I think an excellent call by Bill Snyder. He needed something to get his team going. They'd been completely shut down here in the second half. The snap to the short man, and you can see well-devised Curtis Madden into the secondary, and Chris Hudson has to throw a shoulder into him to knock him down. The snap goes to the up back, and Madden breaks through cleanly. And not only picks up the first down, but picks up 25 yards, and it's exactly what the Kansas State team needed right now. Well, now the crowd's getting into it. Kansas State down at the CU 38-yard line. Straw complete to Sant. Breaks some tackles, fumbles the ball. And it looks like the Buffs have it. Yes, Eric Hamilton recovers the fumble by Vili Sant. What a break for CU. We also have a penalty on the play. I don't think this will change the possession, however. Looked like the flag came after the ball was fumbled away. And yet the official is saying there was no penalty. No flag on the play. Interception stand. First down, Colorado. That's the second time that's happened today. I see it. It, it kills me because I, th I think they'd be better served just to explain what they were thinking when the flag was dropped. Samp is all by himself. Now will make several good moves to get back to the middle of the field. He's hit there by Greg Thomas. The ball comes loose, and Eric Hamilton, number six, right in the correct place, and the Buffs dodge yet another bullet. Greg Thomas got a helmet on that ball and popped it loose, and now the Buffs. Lamont Warren tries that pirouette move again, and it works again. And Lamont Warren is loose up to midfield. A great run by the freshman out of California. His first start last week, and again this week, he is proving clearly one thing. Unless you wrap up Lamont Warren, he is going to break tackles and continue to run. Great move on Mendez, and the strength of the youngster is amazing. Warren just rambles down the sidelines, and the Buffs now with a critical first down. And on that big gain, Warren goes over the 100-yard mark rushing today. He's got 101. First and 10 for the Buffs at their own 48. Another ball batted. That's the third pass today deflected by Kansas State. Boy, this crowd was just fixing to get into the game after the fake punt. And then the big gainer to Sam, and he fumbled the football. Look at Darian Hagan. You know, the Johnny Unitas Award finalists came out this week. Seven of the top quarterbacks in the nation. Hagan wasn't even on that list. Hard to understand. Lamont Warren again with a good push. This time into Kansas State territory. Down to the 48 of the Wildcats. A gain of four. Brings up third and seven. 49 yard line. It'll be third and seven. Hagan complete down to the 40 yard line. Good for first down. Bunch of CU folks who made the trip down here to Manhattan. The pass was complete. It's a pretty good throw by Darian Hagen and Charles Johnson. And that's a play that Johnson waiting for the football. It looked for a minute like it wasn't going to get there in time, but it did. So first down at the Kansas State 41. Looked like a busted play. Hagen, no game. Tony Williams in his face quickly. 
Well, I tell you, in his face and in his chest and in his stomach and in his legs, and Tony Williams just kind of engulfed Darian Hague in this play. 6'4 and 305 says, uh-uh, little fella. Not this play. Social science major, Tony Williams. He got very social with Hagen that bad. Well, that's a big man. Second and 10 for the Buffs. Lamont Warren up the gut. About four yards before Elijah Alexander takes him. Darian Hagen facing third and seven now. Sean Brown runs in the play to him, whispers in Hagen's ear. Spread out at the bottom of your screen is Charles Johnson. He's the only wide receiver out there on third and seven. A full house backfield. Hagen on the option, and the Buffs will have to give it up. Evan Simpson. When you're going to run the option, you have to do a good job backside. You can't have any leakage. And this time from the right side of the screen, Darian Hagan never has a chance to get into the hole. Evan Simpson, the nose tackle, fights off the block and is there before Hagan can cut it up. Mitch Berger, the punting duties. And Michael Smith will return. He's at his own 10-yard line waiting on the Berger kick. A nice punt by Berger, leaves it short of the end zone, and the Buffs down it at the six-yard line. That's where K-State will have it when we get back. suspension and the accuracy of anti-lock brakes the art of excitement the science of control the all-new pontiac bonneville Get on your pontiac! see your neighborhood colorado pontiac dealer today's game is brought to you by mcdonald's by infinity and by cellular one Les Shapiro and Dave Logan in Manhattan, Kansas. The Buffs struggling against Kansas State, but with a 10 to nothing lead. And we've got 11 minutes and 11 seconds to go in this game. Kansas State with the ball. Looking at a long drive ahead of it. CU just punted. K-State with the ball at their own seven yard line. Eric Gallen up the middle, across the 10. Looks like a gain of about five. Greg Beaker to tackle. Brian Diet also in there. Young man from Pomona High School. Second and five. Again, Kansas State running the ball, trying to catch CU off guard, but it didn't work that well that time. Gain of two yards. And Baker, once again, on the tackle. Colorado's going to have to prepare themselves for next week because it will not be throwing the football everywhere. It'll be Nebraska lining up with Derrick Brown at tailback and Keith McCann at quarterback, and they will see a lot of run. Third and three for K-State. 
Good rush in the grasp and finally brought down. The man who got a piece of him first was the nose tackle, Joel Steed. The senior out of Aurora Hinkley High School. And you see Steed, I think Joel Steed probably likes playing in a game like this more so than playing against an option team because you don't get many chances. We've got an injured player. Not many chances for a nose guard to rush the quarterback. More times than not, he's getting bounced around by the center and both guards, and we've got a couple of guys down, almost intertwined. One on each team. I think one is Brian Diet, whose right arm is under Paul Watson. Diet's okay, but we're not sure about Paul Watson. I tell you, he was stood up and still struggling to stay standing, trying to get rid of the football. Took a pretty good pop. He's a poised young man. He's been in the grasp a couple of times. Still tried to get the throw off. A couple of times he did get the throw off. And he goes limping off the field with some help from the training staff. We take a look at a Watson trying to elude Joel Steed, but watch him stand up and still look down the field. Then Diet and then Chad Brown look like I got his right leg trapped underneath. Steed will get to him first. Yeah, you see the right ankle under 280-pound Joel Steed. K-State has to punt the ball from its own end zone. That's Sean Snyder. Chris Hudson will field it. These are the kinds of punts from this particular spot in the field that as a punt returner, you're thinking big play. You usually get a low line. Right, Snyder got his foot into that one. Sent Hudson back to his own 45, but he still has some room to roam. Fumbles the ball, but CU falls on it. CU will keep the ball and will have it at the K-State 38-yard line. It was a punt of 50 yards, and for Hudson, a return of 15. We'll be right back. It took time and hard work. No one had ever done it before. The technology that combined front-wheel drive and multi-link suspension simply didn't exist. Five years later, there is the Infiniti G20 midsize luxury sedan. And the chance to discover what's already been called one of the best handling cars in the world is right around the corner. Imagine you've got this cousin you haven't seen for 12 years because he went off to Australia to look for zinc. But now he's rich. He's in town, and he wants to see you because you saved his life down at the old swimming hole when you were 12. But he's only in town for three hours, and you're down at the dime store buying orange paint. So how's he going to find you? I don't know. Hello? Cousin Steve! Sure, I remember the old swimming hole. What about it? What's this 59 anytime? 59 anytime. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack time, too. Well, it's your time. Back time. And anytime we go. Time out. No, never. Is this one of those limited time times? No way. It's Google time. And ghostly time. Favorite is the season time. 59 anytime time. He's here for a long, long time. At McDonald's, food, folks, and fun. The Buffs with a ball and the 10 to nothing lead. In fact, they have the ball at the Kansas State 39-yard line. Lamont Warren is down. In college ball, once a knee hits, you're down, whether or not you've been hit by an opponent. To illustrate how unusual this kind of game is for Colorado, 29 of the last 30 regular season games, the Buffs have scored 20 points or more. We're under nine minutes to go here in Manhattan. They've got 10. So it has not been vintage Colorado football. And, and again, you have to give Kansas State at least some of the credit. Second and 12. Warren again. Pounds his way down to the 35-yard line. Now, speaking of streaks, Dave, CU has a pretty good one going in conference play. The Buffs have won 17 straight Big 8 games. Their last loss, 1988. Yep, and of those 17, eight have come on the road. So this would be number nine in Big 8 Conference road play if they could get it. 
Well, right now they're just trying to get a first down. It's third and seven. Lamont Warren having a fine afternoon so far. To Michael Westbrook. Reaches over trying to get that first down yardage and it'll be close. You know, there are some times when as a wide receiver or a wingback type, you don't like to be 6'2 or 6'3 or 6'4. A lot of body exposed to the defensive backs. There are other times, however, that you kind of like being tall, and this is one of them. Westbrook, with that effort there, second and third effort, I think will have enough yardage for the first down. They're going to measure it. The sticks are out on the field. One Kansas State fan below us yelling, come on, refs, we haven't gotten a break all day. Well, he's wrong. The weather, That's we thought early was going to be quite nasty, and it's been reasonably nice. Westbrook, by the way, seven catches for 90 yards. A star in the making. Well, the measurement says CU gets the first down, so Westbrook did his job reaching that extra few inches. So the Buffs with another shot on the Kansas State 29-yard line. Lamont Warren thrown for a loss of two yards by a Quincy Griffith. Counter tray again. You'll see offensive linemen from the left side pulling. Warren tries to duck underneath them, but Venables gets good penetration and actually throws the, the rhythm of the playoff. And then Griffith comes up with the tackle. Second and 12. A good rush by Tony Williams. Hagan with a nice dump off pass to Sean Brown. Nobody within 10 yards of Brown. That's why Hagan was able to float the pass. But Darian Hagan escapes the rush. Sean Brown will make the catch. He's so wide open, he can't even believe it. And then watch the treatment he gives William Price, the cornerback. Yeah. Get off me. Sean Brown at 245 pounds with very good hands and a key component in the Colorado passing game. Brown picked up nine yards on the play, so the Buffs have third and three. And once again, the Wildcat crowd on its feet. Lamont Warren, he's got the first down. Back, <laughs> he might have the touchdown, yes. The last 10 yards. A number of defenders rode Warren's back into the end zone. What an effort by the freshman. And Jason Perkins, the offensive guard, is injured for Colorado. But Lamont Warren, what a run. It's going to be called back, however, due to a legal procedure call. That would be one for the highlight reel. That might be one that even though it's called back, you stick on there anyway. Bill McCartney with the hat off. Thinking, good night. I see a few more gray hairs on that head. You know, for a guy who's leading. Illegal procedure, offense, five yards, repeat, third down. The touchdown is called back. I was going to say, McCartney doesn't seem like he's too worried, despite the fact he has just a 10 to nothing lead with quite a bit of time to go here. You see Jason Perkins being helped off, and that is a blow if he is hurt. Perkins, number 75 and right guard, will get a good block there and then get run over with the wash. Lamont Warren, though, watch the determination. He breaks the tackle of Mendez. He's met on the 10-yard line, and the legs keep driving. Take a look at the injury. Jason Perkins, number 75. Watch his left leg, and from the left side of the screen, Ooh. the leg will get rolled up on. That hurts looking at it. The Buffs with a third and eight.
Hagan, as he's going down, completes the pass to James Hill. But short of the first down. I'm not sure what this play was going to be. Darian Hagan with a little flat pass to James Hill. It was well played defensively. And CU, too much this afternoon, has, has really had to almost grab bag their offense. I don't think, with the exception of maybe the first couple of series here in the second half, they've been able to get into the rhythm that they wanted to. And again, that might be good news as they head to next week against Nebraska. Good news for the coaching staff so that they can stress what needs to be done and have the attention of their players. Ball delayed on the offense. CU penalized today 11 times for 82 yards. They took that one on purpose. They're in too close for Berger to punt. This one sends him five yards back. He's got a little more room to try and fit it inside that 10-yard line now. Kansas State doesn't even have anybody back there to return it. I wouldn't be surprised if they take another five yards here. Another penalty. Again, nobody back to return the punt for Kansas State. So McCartney decided against Jim Harper ran in the field and Bill waved him off. He didn't want to take a chance to get another one blocked. And with a long field goal, sometimes the trajectory is so low that it can be. Well, look at that. What a nice bounce for the Buffs. It bounces sideways and out of bounds at the two-yard line. Kansas State will have the ball and a long way to go. What's this 59 anytime? 59 anytime. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner, at time too. Well, it's your time. Time. And anytime we go. Time out. No, never. Is this one of those limited time times? No way. It's Google time. And ghostly time. Favorite is the season time. 59 anytime time. It's here for a long, long time. At McDonald's, food, folks, and fun. <laughs> We didn't look at it like everyone else. That was too confining. Instead, we opened up the Infinity G20 with a luxurious cabin forward design and the exhilaration of a 140 horsepower engine. It's designed to give you breathing room and take your breath away all at the same time. Back at KSU Stadium, quick update on Jason Perkins. He injured his left knee, should be all right. Jason Smargesso, in a quarterback for KSU. Defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz was talking about him, saying, you got to keep this guy in the pocket. He'll only hurt you if he has a chance to scramble around. Keep him in the pocket. He won't hurt us. Back upstairs. Well, Smargesso just scrambled and almost hurt himself. In fact, he was almost thrown for a safety, but got out of the end zone and a gain of maybe one yard. Jason Smargesso, a sophomore out of New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. The Buffs saw a little bit of him last year in the blowout. He ran it pretty well. And right there, he ran for about another three yards. Greg Beekert, the tackle. Beekert had a big day. Probably not as big a day as he had statistically against Baylor when he brought down 21 runners. But he is having a good day nonetheless. Uh, people here acting as if this game is over. 4.43 to go. CU with a 10 to nothing lead. Smargesso tries to come back across field, and it's incomplete. Intended receiver was Gerald Benton. And for a youngster who's highly regarded as a runner, 
that was a case where Smargesso could have run and picked up the necessary yardage because there was nobody in front of him. But he decided to make a tough throw and no dice. He came into KSU much heralded, but he has yet to win the starting quarterback job here. Last year, he backed up Carl Straw. This year, he's backing up Watson, who left the game with an injury. Sean Snyder, once again punting, end over end. Chris Hudson, fair catch at the 36-yard line. Fair catch by number 47, Hudson. We've got 4.26 to go. See you with a 10 to nothing lead. We'll be right back in Manhattan. Imagine you are a dinosaur. And you're standing around one day talking to your friend, the woolly mammoth. And you say, hey, it's getting awful cold around here. And the woolly mammoth says, yeah, maybe we should have some blankets sent in from the hills. Let me borrow your phone. So you reach into your pocket, and then you think, hey, I'm a dinosaur. I don't have a cellular phone. Maybe I'll just go over here and lie in the mud until this cold snap passes. Man, it's cold. It took time and hard work. No one had ever done it before. The technology that combined front-wheel drive and multi-link suspension simply didn't exist. Five years later, there was the Infiniti G20 midsize luxury sedan and the chance to discover what's already been called one of the best handling cars in the world is right around the corner. What's this 59 anytime? 59 anytime. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack time too. Well, it's your time. My time. And anytime we go. Time out. No, never. Is this one of those limited time times? No way. Ten to nothing. CU leading Kansas State. CU has the ball. Threatening again at the Kansas State 36 yard line. Darian Hagan still in the game. James Hill runs it down to the 31. Brooks Bart of the tackle. Bart is a pretty good linebacker here at Kansas State. The team's leading tackler. He was second team all conference last year. As a freshman, a couple of years ago, he was the Big Eight Defensive Newcomer of the Year. Right now, we give all that up for a turnover, probably. Second and six. Lamont Warren. He who hesitates is thrown for a loss. Warren now 24 carries for 112 yards. Darian Hagan 12 carries for 50 yards. Kansas State, as we told you, a little more stout in the defensive line this year than they have been in past years. Colorado defensively, we've talked a lot about them here in the second half. Unofficially, Kansas State with 62 yards of total offense. After moving the ball very, very well in the first half. Matter of fact, Matter of fact, the first half, Kansas State had 205 yards of total offense. Mark McIntosh has something for us from the field. Mark? Yeah, Les, you might be able to see right in front of you, two CU buffs had the same number. Number 34, Dexter Bussey, and number 34, Chad Brown. You're probably wondering why. Well, here's the story. When Dexter Bussey was recruited last year out of Louisiana, he was promised the jersey number 34. Everybody kind of forgot about the fact that Chad Brown wore number 34. But since one's an offensive player and one's a defensive player, it's okay. But it's been kind of funny sometimes this year. You'll hear after Chad Brown has made a tackle, they'll say tackle by number 34, Dexter Bussey. Dexter Bussey actually has more tackles than some CU defensers. Defensers, defensive backs. Back up to you guys. I'm very aware of the fact they both wear the same number because I had Chad Brown catching a pass a few weeks ago. Third and six for the Buffs on the K-State 32. 
And K-State's bringing everybody on the blitz. Lamont Warren down to the 27-yard line. He's short of the first down, however. On the stop, number eight, Masters, number 32, Mendez. About a yard short. It'll be fourth and one. Let's see what the Buffs do here. Oh, they'll go for it. No reason to even think about attempting a field goal. Too short to punt. Now, even if CU made a field goal, Kansas State would still need two touchdowns to win this game. Hagan does it himself and gets the first down, and that should be one of the final nails in the K-State coffin. 2.53 to go in the game. A first down at the K-State 23-yard line. See you with a 10 to nothing lead. Hagan again stretches that defense on the option. Knows exactly how many yards he needs. Darian before today, eight straight games in which he threw at least one touchdown pass. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. It's a school record, too. Timeout for the Buffs. That's their first timeout in the half. Each team with two timeouts left. And the folks here at Wagner Field starting to pile out of the stadium. Not to go on the playing surface following today's game. Thank you for your cooperation. You know, the Colorado volleyball team is ranked 18th in the country, Dave. And tonight at 7.30 at the Coors Events Conference Center, the Buffs will host 7th-ranked Nebraska. Should be a pretty good matchup. Big A championship on the line tonight at the Events Center. Today is a career day at Kansas State. We welcome the 550 high school and community college students with our adult leaders at Kansas State. As long as we're talking about other sports at CU, we should mention Joe Harrington's CU Buffs basketball team will have an open scrimmage on Saturday, November 2nd, next Saturday, also at the Coors Event Center, from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right before the Nebraska game on national TV. You can catch a glimpse of the Buff basketball squad if you'd like. First down for CU at the 23. Warren down to the 20. Under two and a half minutes to go. Well, Bill McCartney said it to us last night. What goes up must come down. His kids came in a little flat. But are still holding on to a 10 to nothing win against, a 10 to nothing, <laughs> giving him the win already. A 10 to nothing lead against Kansas State. A lot of the fans are giving him the win already too, leaving the stadium. That's James Hill up the middle. Back to the line of scrimmage. Dropped by number 59, Gillian. Timeout, Kansas State. And Kansas State uses its second of three timeouts. The Kansas State volleyball team looks for its second straight big eight win tonight against Oklahoma at a Hearn Field House. Match time set for 7.30. Bill Snyder on the sideline. Do you call this a moral victory for the Wildcats and Snyder? Well, we might. I don't think Bill Snyder will be content with that got a moral victory last week in Lincoln losing 38 31 that's enough of those moral victories yeah huh? you, you you get too many moral victories you <laughs> you get fired you have to go somewhere else <laughs> well I don't think Snyder's in any jeopardy of that happening Kansas State football program has been down for many many years and once it's down that long it's tough to bring back it takes some time it takes patience but Snyder looks like he's got it on the right track well, Bill McCartney came into a pretty sorry program at CU and built it into a winner. And the K-State folks look to Boulder as a prime example of what can happen here in Manhattan. But they weren't, however, quite 
as far down as Kansas State when Bill McCartney took over Colorado's program. Well, also there was that threat of success that ran throughout the CU program through history. Kansas State really has never had any success here. James Hill again on third down. And now it'll be fourth down for the Buffs. On the stop, number 59, Killian, and number 55, Griffin. Clock still running. Less than a minute, 30 to go. Buffs will run one more play. No doubt a running play. Keep that clock ticking. It's fourth and five. Fourth down, five yards to go. Hagan will do it. Pitches the ball. I don't know about that one. He probably should have just gone down. I'll tell you what happened, though. When Hagan cut it up inside, Lamont Warren stopped running in the play, thinking Hagan, I think, was going to keep it himself. And then Houdini pitched the football. Kansas State fans on their feet applauding the effort of their defense. Fourth down, you know that even if you pitch the ball, and lose it, you were going to lose it anyway. And what few CU fans are here are throwing oranges onto the field. So Kansas State takes over on downs. Paul Watson is back in the game. The starter for Kansas State. He left a little earlier with a leg injury, but he's back now. 55 seconds to go. Watson brought down by Ronnie Wolfork. Watson gets back to the line of scrimmage, so I don't think Wolfork will get a sack on that play. CU came in looking for some interceptions, looking to get to the quarterback. They did both very well today. A couple of picks, and at last count, six sacks. This time, the pass is complete to Eric Gallon. Ronnie Bradford, the tackle. 21 seconds to go. See you with a 10 to nothing lead. And one of the oranges we were talking about. See you defensively today is nailed Paul Watson 10 times for negative yardage. So they've done a good job against an offense that certainly had a dose of confidence after last week. And give a little credit to Kansas State. Despite the loss, this is a team that lost to CU last year 64 to 3, and 19 of the 22 starters are back. So a vastly improved K State team might be a team to reckon with in the near future. Tonight at 6.30, catch the beat. Broncos beat with Gary Miller. This week, defensive end Ron Holmes joins Gary to take a look ahead to tomorrow's game with New England. You'll also hear from Joe Collier, former defensive coordinator in Denver, who's now walking the sidelines for the Patriots. That's Broncos beat tonight at 6.30 on KCNC Channel 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. And of course, tomorrow in New England, we'll, report, we'll be reporting live from the locker room immediately following the game. Keep in mind, it is an afternoon game, a 2 o'clock start in Denver. And we'll be in the locker room live afterwards to talk to the Broncos about it. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. We're finished in Manhattan. The Buffs escape with a 10 to nothing win over the Kansas State Wildcats. We'll be right back to wrap it up. 